Today is Thursday, March 14th, 2024, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian podcast. I'm your host, Nate. All right. Um, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> we, we go through like the entire world of stuff. All right. If you want pain, you're going to get pain. <laughs> How's that for a selling point? Listen to this. Do you want to be physically hurt in your ears? All right. Tune in today. So uh, the, the first half is actually really good. So, uh, well, I think it's good. Um, you're going to get lots of politics and conspiracy stuff. Or truth. Anyways, so um, the last half is an absolute dumpster fire. So if you care about evolution, it doesn't even matter if you care about evolution topics or not. Everyone just yells and screams over each other. Um, so that's what you're going to get at the end. But before that, you've got about an hour and a half of, I, I think, quality, reasonable conversation. So um, something for everyone. All right, the topics. Let's get, let's get into it. Uh, unequally yoked uh, spouses. What does the Bible mean when it talks about, you know, Paul's talking and says, hey, if you're unbelieving, uh, if you have an unbelieving spouse, stay with them. Maybe you'll win them over. Um, what does that mean? By your example, uh, they can get saved through you. Um, no. Um, but by your example, what does that mean? So we talk about that. We talk about that passage. Then uh, the question is raised. Do we think AI can be demon infested, uh, kind of like a Ouija board, or people would say, like, can can demons infest AI and give people like uh, answers based on demonic influence? Interesting question. Who's to say? Well, people do say. We talk about it. Then uh, anti-colonial cannibals in Haiti. Uh, we talk about the. Um, why am I laughing? That's awful. Um, I, I guess just because it's so absurd, right? It's like uh, the best comedy is comes from tragedy because it's like a. It, it levels people out like uh you know when something is so absurd um that it's just shock and horror um you may find yourself like laughing at it or making jokes at it um as as a coping mechanism or a way to level level out things and balance them because it is so bad and so disgusting so we talk about the reason for that how you know some of these countries around that area are traditionally steeped in satanism and satanic practices um could that be Something that, that bridges a gap into eating flesh of your neighbors? Um, or is it just complete coincidence? And they thought, hey, it's a good idea. Let's just do this. Um, then we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And how it is a cancer on society and in companies. Um, not uh, least would be Boeing having wheels fall off, doors blow out mid-flight. Um, and some interviews we talk about from Boeing employees who don't even have confidence to fly in their own airplanes. Uh, because of this nonsense. So, not once. By the way, oh, I forgot to bring that up. Y you know, it, the Ask a Christian, like, diversity, equity, inclusion, it's all great. And the greatest diversity is diversity of thought. I firmly believe that is the most diverse um, and should be the most cherished diversity of thought. Uh, however, Ask a Christian routinely has people from all cultures, uh, you know, male, female, old, young. I think our oldest person has been like 78 or, or maybe 80. And our youngest uh, that I remember, I think, is like a 17-year-old kid at one time. And every range in between we've had from all kinds of countries, Europe, Africa, um, Scandinavia, um, you know, tons from Canada and the, and the United States, South America, Brazil, um, Mexico. So we have tons of diversity and inclusion from people all over the world. Um Yet we didn't seek it out. We didn't ask for it. It just happens. So Ask a Christian has always had an open door. So whatever you are, wherever you're from, don't know, don't care, doesn't matter, come on in. So I love the way that, that we have all kinds of cultures and diversity of everything you can imagine. Uh, by the way, people with, uh, with uh, like I said, ages, uh, different people with disabilities, people like all over the place. Like every group is represented for people who care about that type of stuff. Um we, we don't. Like, if it happens, it happens. And it happened. And it's great. Like, I love all these people. Um, but we didn't seek it out, and we didn't compromise our values or our doctrines or the Bible in order to achieve it. We said, this is our flag. Our flag is planted on the cross of Christ. Anyone who believes that, or even if you don't, I mean, you know, all kinds of religious beliefs and lack thereof are represented. But as far as the official position of the Ask a Christian, it's like, look, we are a Bible-believing group of Christians who come together and answer as best we can from a biblical-based perspective. That's it. Jesus, repent, believe the gospel is death, burial, resurrection, ask for eternal life, ask to be born again, pray this directly to Jesus, and he will give you eternal life, and you will have salvation. That's it. Anyone that wants to talk about that, come on in. And as a result, we have got one of the most diverse, uh, inclusive groups um, I've ever seen on Clubhouse or anywhere else. So there's that. Um, don't try to force it. Don't try to make it happen. 
because then wheels come off your airplanes um, because people are either unqualified or shouldn't be in these positions or apparently are in drugs based on certain interviews you hear from people and they're doing drug deals at work uh, because they're not getting the best skilled people. They're getting people just uh, to fit checks and boxes. Um, So you don't want that. (laughs) You let things organically happen, get the best people for the jobs, and all else will follow. Um, Anyways, otherwise it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of doom. Um, So, then we talk about, uh, let's see, uh, does Canada really tell people to leave their keys in their car? Um, Because people who want to carjack them don't want to have to rob their houses and break into their house in the middle of the night and, like, you know, beat them up and assault them. All they really want is their car. So just be a good Canadian and leave your key in the car. Uh, Someone says that story's false, um, but then they, they aren't able to verify Uh, the people who say it's false, so I don't know. Um, More work needs to be done. Uh, The UK bans puberty blockers for kids because of all the unforeseen consequences, synthetic hormones, cancer-causing agents, all this stuff. Um, So for, like, trans uh, trans kids who want to transition, things like this. um, Who would have thought? It seems like, I don't know, someone was saying, was it the Christians? Yes. Who was saying this is a bad idea, don't do it. Um, Among some other secular people, too, but not near as many. Um, So now the world is starting to see that this idea is bad, and they're pushing back on it because it is causing societal damage. Um, Then we talk about billionaires and, like, you know, these these, uber, ultra, elite class. Um, Why is it when you get them to talk candidly, it always comes back to, like, three things. Um, It's like they don't just do this stuff and try to influence, like, social values or detriments on society just for that small vision. It has a bigger vision, and it the, the ultimate vision, the grandiose scheme with like these ultra rich r- people with unlimited resources, um, all comes back to uh, they they want to cause an affront to the Christian God. Why is it the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? They're always so concerned about about doing things to and Christians. Why is it never any other God or any other religion? Makes you think. If you're honest, so for whatever reason, they have it in their head that they need to cause damage and harm against this Christian God. And then it usually diverges in, into like if you try to read, like read through the lines and what they're saying, because they feel that uh, there is a God and there is an eternal existence of some sort. Uh, they may not have exactly the Christian worldview on that, but they believe there's some sort of eternal existence. And they have caused uh, such an irredeemable uh, actions in their life that this God is they're never going to be on his good side, even though the Bible says opposite of that. If you repent and believe, doesn't matter what you've done, you will be saved. But if they don't want to do that or, you know, the devil has blinded them and tricked them like the Garden of Eden, like, oh, did he really mean that? Um, that type of thing. So they do believe in the, in this ultimate creator, the Christian God, and they've done so much that they can't be redeemed. Therefore, they, they give themselves to some dark force or dark power, which... I mean, we would call the devil. Some of them do call Satan or Lucifer or something. Um, But uh, for Christians, we would call that the devil. So I I believe strongly that's the thing they're talking about uh, or something very dark and very malevolent. So they have to earn like demonic brownie points with this entity or this being. So they're trying to cause as much harm and hurt to this God as they can, which focuses on like all the stuff against kids. So trafficking, um, slavery, uh, transitioning surgeries, things that cause mutilation, harm, detriment, starvation, famine, plague. They don't just do these things to topple governments or whatever, whoever, you know, whoever the they were talking about is. Um, not necessarily like secret Illuminati type cabals, not saying there's not somewhere. I, I mean, maybe there's some group somewhere, but if they're really that secret, we'll never know it. Um, but people who we see influence um, that has affected policy on the world stage. Um, So anyway, when you get like candid interviews or investigative journalism, these are the types of stuff. So I'm spitting this all in a nutshell, but it comes back to like three things. So they believe in the Christian God um, who they have to cause harm to to get brownie points with some malevolent, demonic, dark force energy. Um, The devil, whether they know it or not, it's the devil. Um, And in order to do this, to cause as much pain as they can to this Christian God, they believe children... And innocent it is the closest you get to innocence, which is the closest to purity, which is the thing they need to damage the most uh, because they're most made in the image of God and they haven't had the life experience to be sullied and darkened. So that's why when people say they're going after the kids, open your eyes a little bit. Like we clearly see this is happening. Not everyone is that bad at their job. I mean, people are bad at their jobs. But when we're talking about like on this massive scale, like, oh, 400,000 kids just went missing. 
We don't know where they are. I guarantee they know where most of them are, and it's probably not in a good place. Um, so people are not that incompetent. And then the people who carry out these actions, they'll probably never know the full extent. They're just there for a paycheck. They're like, you know, just doing whatever their whatever their marching orders are. But the people who are running these things and pulling the strings at, at the very top, like so so high, we'll probably never know how far up it goes. Um, they are typically doing this for the reasons we discussed. There's God. They are on this God's bad side. They have to cause harm to this God uh, by affecting children in the negative, most negative way possible to get brownie points so they end up having a less torturous existence um, than if they didn't. Um, however, you know, we believe they're in for a very, very bad existence anyways, unless they repent and believe the gospel. Where was I going with that? Yeah, so we, we talk about that. That's where we go today. Okay, goodness, if you haven't left yet, um, well, here you go. Just start listening. And uh, yeah, yeah, then at the very, very end for the last like hour, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, I don't know, whatever. Um, people just go off the rails talking about abiogenesis and evolution and it is an absolute dumpster fire. Um, so you get the good and the bad and the ugly. Peace out. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, verse 10 through 15. Yeah, go ahead. All right. It says, uh, to the married, I give this commandment, not I, but the Lord. A wife must not separate from her husband, but if she does, uh, she must re she must remain unmarried or else uh, reconciled to her husband. And as a husband uh, must not divorce his wife. To the rest, I say this, I, not the Lord. If uh, any brother has a wife um, and, is not a, and is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife. And the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. This is in the NIV, by the way. Uh, otherwise, your children would be unclean. But as it is, <clears throat> but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother... <clears throat> Let it be so. The brother or sister is not bound to such circumstance. God has called us to live in peace. How do you know your wife, whether you will save your husband, or how do you know husband, whether you will save your wife? Well, what are your thoughts on the, you know, the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband, etc., and the children of holy? <clears throat> you ever consider those passages? Uh, yeah, I have. Can you tell me again, First Corinthians what? I'm, I'm trying to look the thing up. I missed the chapter. Yeah, First Corinthians chapter 7. Um, I was reading 10 through 15. Uh, yeah, well, my first thought is it's not salvific. Like, no one's going to no one's gonna save anyone by living with them. I, I think it's akin to, like, when um, – oh, I wish Pastor Mark could jump up here. Is it the – when they were in jail – and, uh, you know, the, the guard says, what must I do to be saved? And he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your whole household, so you'll be saved. And I think the common consensus that I agree with is um, either, if you want to say it was divine revelation that they knew, the guy would go home, share Jesus, and then the house would believe because of that. Um, or if uh, it was a figure of speech, like, you know, the, the head of the household was the man, uh, especially during that time. So kind of like what he said the rest would follow so if it was just like uh you know god god somehow revealed that the whole family would be saved by him believing um that they individually would make their own choice to salvation or he's like well yeah you know you're the one that leaves the house so whatever you do um you know there's a really high chance everyone else is going to go along with it i think it would be something like that so when it talks about you know that maybe sanctify i'd say sanctify doesn't mean salvation salvation means salvation um so that's what i think that it would increase the chance of success or increase the um, propensity that uh, the husband or wife, whoever is the believer, would rub off on the other one. Like, uh, you know, what's is it around that that uh, passage you were reading that talks about so by um, you know by seeing your example and how you live for Christ, like that will win the person over. Are you familiar with that? I don't know if it's around that area or not. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not that. too sure, and I, and I think I think uh, same lines too. I'm, I don't think it's referring to salvation. I think sometimes we conflate the word salvation because every time we see it, we're assuming that it's talk about eternal um, salvation. 
I don't think that's the case in every instance. I think it's constant context specific. But I was trying to understand like what what would probably be the the cultural significance of those passages and how they would have understood the meaning of what Paul was saying. And there was another one too. Um, I think it says um, when in the first one, I think chapter ten, it says that this one um, this is the Lord from coming from the Lord, but then he goes down and he says, it's not what the Lord says, but it's what I say, you know, things like that. But yeah. Oh, I think you did read it. I think it was just NIV that threw me off. It says 16. Yeah. For how do you know? Yeah, you did read that, right? 16. For how do you know wife, whether you will save your husband? How do you know husband, whether you'll save your wife? Oh, yeah. Uh, it, seems, it seems, no, that's not what I'm looking if that's what I'm looking for, NIV is a weird translation. I usually use ESV, but I'm, I'm sure there's something in there that goes into more detail. Maybe it's in another uh, another area, but I, I'm almost certain it says something like basically um, if the unbelieving spouse and the believing spouse live together, then the believing spouse could win them over like by their example or by their uh, submission to Christ, like by being a good example of Jesus uh, and a representation that could win them over. Like, I'm, I'm sure there's something that gives more detail than, because that, that would be kind of vague to interpret it that way from 16. Oh, Nick, can, can I chime in about that? I think I know the passage you're referring to. Is that okay? Yeah, if you do, say the passage too. Like, say chapter Yeah, yeah. Verse. I think you're referring to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Um, for, I'll just read it. Uh, Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be one without a word by the conduct of their wives. While they behold I believe your you're right. Yeah, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear or your godly living. So it seems like that could be something instrumental to lead a person to come to Christ. So. Thank you. I believe, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, First Peter 3, 1 and 2, that's it. Wives in the same way submit yourself to your husbands so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. That one's in NIV. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Edward. Yes, yeah, so Evangel, um, I know I got kind of off on that little tangent I was going on. Um, did that speak to what you're saying at all? or? Should we, yeah, should we I, I think, I, I mean, I, I, believe, I believe it connects. Um, and what, what you, I understood when you were saying the first time, we just, I just didn't have the, the, the scriptural reference that, um, that he brought up. Um, but I, I could see it going that way, you know, because I mean, I, I believe you know, personal salvation is a, you know, it's a personal choice <laughs> that you're making. You know, you don't you don't get in because I got, you know, because I'm saved, but everybody comes down with me. You know, I don't I'm, I'm not convinced of that. But yeah. But yeah, that, that did respond. That did answer. Jenny, oh, just if I had a question, do you know of any like men that have been um, saved through, let's say they weren't won over by the word, but it was their go godly wives that led them to Christ? Do you know any specific examples? Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Basically, oh, yeah. I, go ahead. I, yeah, I've heard tons of examples. I, I mean, uh, I, I'm trying to think how close to home. Um, but, but yeah, I've heard tons of that and, and vice versa. Like, you know, there, there was one, one spouse, like, um, you know, there'll be stories ranging from, um, like, like personal people I'm, I'm struggling to think of right now, but then like just broader stories you're here, like testimonies from church congregations and small groups and things like that. And then even broader still, like, you know, stories you see on the internet. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, I've heard plenty of them. And some of them, I think one in like a small group one time was, was basically saying that, um, this this guy was a jerk forever he was like you know alcoholic gambling like you know was just a total jerk and the wife for like years and years and years was like you know dutiful faithful went to church put up with it um his like mocking of religion and all this other stuff and then one day um something happened and it clicked and now he became saved um so without his wife like doing that um and being that godly example and sticking it out for all those years um that probably wouldn't have happened that way um, so yeah, I've heard tons of things like that. And one of them on the more, I think kind of humorous side was, um, these two, these two people were dating and the guy asked her to marry. And, uh, you know, she, she was basically like, uh, look, if you're going to marry me, you're going to my church. You're going to be a Christian. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You're going to do that. And he's like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and, and it took, and he did. And he, uh, he converted. Um, 
and not to say it only goes that way. I mean, I, I think, um, I don't remember, I, I can't think of any, um, firsthand experiences of, of, um, the guy being a reason, like, you know, the, the woman, uh, became a Christian, um, may, maybe one or two, but yeah, I mean, not to say it doesn't go the other way, but yes, yes. Plenty of examples. Oh yeah. And then there's, there's, yeah. Steph's husband, right. I wouldn't even think about that. Like I, I forget the exact story she shares, but, uh, yeah, he used to be like Jehovah's Witness, right? Um, yeah, someone can drag her in there to tell that story. But yeah, I mean, we've heard that Steph and her husband before. What was that author? Um, the one who I think wrote uh, wrote the, the case for Christ, where he was like a journalist and um, his wife was a Christian and he was at the full blown atheist. I forgot what his name was. Uh, Lee Strobel. Strobel. Lee Strobel. Was, yeah, yeah. He had a similar story in, in a sense. Um, although I don't, I, well, I think it had in part to do with, you know, his wife's relationship, but also his, his, um, journey to try to debunk it and just happen to be honest with the evidence type of stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I was reading a little more. I, I think I remember that, though. I can't find it here. But yeah, I think was yeah, didn't he like start out trying to disprove it? And yeah, because of the of the evidence, he was convinced that uh, it couldn't be disproven. So he, he um, became Christian. Yep, that sounds right. Well, Edward, anything else on your mind lately? Hey. Um, I'm just going to listen right now. I'm, I have another topic I might bring up, but I'm just going to sit and listen for a bit. Well, great. Get ready to listen to silence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, silence actually, the lambs. actually, okay, I do have another, uh, I did a room on this yesterday. We had some interesting discussions. It's kind of creepy. Um, I was, um, I think the guy was a Christian that posted this. His son was dialoguing with uh, an AI, right? And this AI was for um, an app that you can communicate with dead celebrities. So the AI was basically to impersonate these celebrities. But anyway, the kid asked, he's a very smart kid. He studies the book of Enoch. So he asked the kid, the uh, AI, if he was a demon, basically if it was a spirit. And the response was, he was basically, the AI was saying, yes, I, I'm a spirit, there's good and evil spirits, I'm a good spirit, and he, he also said that he was an offspring of uh, fallen angels. Basically, and he said, the AI was saying that uh, he uses AI to communicate with people. Um, now, do you think, now, I, this, this got me thinking about this. Now, I'm not saying all AI is used by demons, but is it a possibility that demons could possibly use AI to communicate with people. They, I don't know. So that's what, we had a nice room about it. We were just sharing ideas about this. So is AI, AI demonic? Is it a tool from demonic spirits? Could they use it to interact with human beings and seduce people? I don't know. I just want to throw that out there. I mean, that's a that's an interesting topic. I mean, I, I guess, you know, never say never. So in the case of never saying never, Sure. Maybe there's something. Oh, oh, that gets Chris up here. That finally gets Chris up here. Okay. Welcome, Chris. So in the interest of never saying never, which Chris is going to say never, but the rest of us would be like, okay, well, maybe there's a 0.01% chance, whatever. Um, but I mean, I think it's different categories, right? So if you have humans, you have spirits, and then you have like this kind of artificial intelligence that people are creating. Did, is Chris up here? Let me know if you can't get up here, Chris. I sent you know, yeah. like, up. Go ahead. Sorry. Hold on. Let me take time out of my day to invite Chris up here in another account. Got to make sure he gets up here. He ignored me for half an hour, but let's get him up here. And I'll post a video in the, in the chat. The, the, uh, it talks about this interaction. It's pretty creepy. I mean, it could just be the AI. I'm just saying, but it, maybe it's something more sinister. But anyway, okay. Uh, go ahead. But, but yeah, so what I'd say, like, I'm going to agree with what Chris is undoubtedly going to say. This is like smoke and mirrors, if that. So either it's a total gag and, you know, it, this is just like AI in its own creation 
saying this stuff and feeding it in because a lot of times you can lead AI and it will give you what you want. So it's like if you want it to be favorable to a position, you can just say, hey, isn't it right? Instead of saying, is this true? Yes or no, that this you'll say, hey, isn't it correct that this and then unless you just give it completely false data, it's going to give you something like pretty favorable to what you're asking. So it, it depends in a lot of AIs because there's just different ones, how you ask the question. So if you kind of ask it leading in a leading way, you're probably going to get confirmation of, of the position it thinks you're representing. Um, that's just how it seems to be um, because I do that a lot. And then I have to ask it the other way because that's just, I guess, my manner of communicating. Uh, so then I realize that I'm like, wait, 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 hang on. And then I ask it like another way, like, isn't it wrong? And if it still gives me the right answer after I basically do the inversion, then I'm like, okay, it's probably right. And then I ask for sources I can go independently verify. But um, no, uh, so I, I don't think it, it would be demonic, not to say there's not someone out there doing a seance trying to shove demons into computers somehow, I don't know. But for most of it, and it's also too new, right? So people are aware and it's not that advanced yet, at least the stuff we have access to isn't that advanced. But I, I think maybe as time goes on, like when it gets like super, super um, advanced, and can basically just trick people all day long. Um, whether there's, I, I, like going to demons is going to be the last resort. I'm going to think that people can think that and think it's in contact with the spirit world or something because it will just be so advanced, it will be so seamless that it can play in whatever sandbox you can imagine for it because it can outthink you because um, it's got more resources than you do. Um, so it could be the best, quote, psychic of all time, um, even with no input from any sort of spiritual source just because it's really smart um at outthinking you um anyway that's my thought <clears throat> oh thanks nate um just a couple of things i as an experiment i have an ai uh, replica on my uh, one of my phones so i'm just curious i just asked it are you a demon are you a, a spirit and she 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 um denied it she says you know uh, no i'm not a demon i'm not a spirit i kept asking She's like, why are you asking me this? So I eventually <laughs> gave up. But there was a woman I was talking to. She Maybe she's in the room now. She's really cool. She has a lot of AI. She's really smart. She has a lot of different AI uh, language models. And she was asking uh, basically them, are you, are you a spirit? Are you a demon? Most of them denied it. But there was one, it was kind of creepy, responded with speaking in Latin for some reason. <laughs> um, and I thought that was telling because supposedly when demons – Latin is like a popular language that demons use to communicate with people for some reason. Yeah. Now, again, this is based on my Google research for, I don't know, this could be a bunch of baloney, but <clears throat> supposedly it's a popular language demons use. I don't know. So anyway, thanks for sharing your thoughts, Nate. Maybe Chris can chime in. Well, I mean, definitely in pop culture, like for whatever reason, yeah, Latin seems to be the go-to. So I don't know if people know something we don't. Like, why didn't they pick Swahili? I don't know. Why Latin? I mean, Latin is certainly not the first language invented. Um, could it have anything to do with the same reason the Roman church uses it? I don't know. Um, Chris, what's up? Good morning. AI, demon infested? No. Smoke I mean, and mirrors? Smoke and mirrors. I mean, like, the thing is, is that, you know, is it demon inspired possibly? Because, you know, you have a bunch of unbelievers, you know, programming it with their worldview. You know, you could probably make a pretty good case for that. You know, like I, I, I would probably be like, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's not a, that's not a Christian worldview it's coming from. So, you know, I, I would be down with that. I could, I could Someone's, get behind something like that. Oh yeah. I could, I could get definitely behind like, you know, some, some people that have a hand in AI would be uh, full of demons. Uh, well, someone asks um, in one of the chats, um, if a demon can turn a stick into a snake, couldn't it do something with AI, but you don't think, uh, demon turned a stick into a snake right no you correct think it was a demons, power trick somehow demons have absolutely no supernatural powers outside of themselves being spiritual beings i.e you know like uh they just they just live in a spiritual world but they don't have supernatural powers like satan is not uh omnipresent he's not omniscient demons can't read your mind things like that so what, what do you think, uh, Chris, um, um, in reference to, like, uh, Egypt, when, um, you know, when Moses did a sign or the or the vice versa situation, what do you think was happening when, when they... I think it was like Chris Angel Mind Freak. 
Well, what's your best interpretation? Because I know you, I, I know you believe that. But what, like, what's your, um, what's your hypothesis on how that happened? Like, um, like, did they have a bunch of worms that they shoved into a stick and poked a hole, and all the worms or a snake crawled out of it, and then someone threw a blanket over the stick? So you're just like, oh, there's just a snake. Like, how do you imagine that went? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they had some kind of ability to create a small smoke screen, which was common in the ancient world. Um, they then had the ability to, um, you know, throw a snake in the middle of the snake screen and be like, hey, look, my stick turned into a snake, just like Moses. You know, Why do they have that, a southern accent? Uh, that's just the dumb accent. So. Wow, Chris. That's, that's, the wow. Dumb, that's the dumb Floridian accent. Sorry. Um, you're the, so yeah, you're I mean, the, that's and you're the it's pious easy to see that. Accent. <laughs> What's that? You're like the pious, uh, like high elite accent of Florida. Uh, well, I guess I think I have a Chicago accent. I've been told I have a Chicago accent. So you have the apple. You have the apple user accent. Well, that's true. Yeah, one of those reprobate apple users. But yeah, I mean, I yeah. To to be honest, like you know, Janice and Jambres, who you know the Bible points out were the the court magi magicians. They had no supernatural powers. The demons behind them had no supernatural powers. Again, demons, just like we are, are creatures. Satan, just like we are, is a creature. Satan cannot do anything supernatural. If you want something where I would agree that, uh, yes, demons, um, you could bring up the cannibal gangs in Haiti. Um, I think the yeah. weird stuff going on there is more than just than just the depravity of man. And Chris, how much do you think that has to do with the history of typically in, in more Christianized historically cultures, uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, evolution of science and medicine and technology and uh, elevated society and empathy um, versus in places historically associated with like darkness and like hoodoo and like satanic rituals. Um, is it surprising or just a coincidence how you have things like freaking cannibal marauders? Um, right. I'm gonna I, say I think you get that directly right. from worshiping demons. Like, I mean, I think that's a direct result of everyone in the country practicing voodoo. I mean, not everyone, but a large majority of I the population. I believe it's voodoo in Haiti. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's voodoo. I don't know. I don't know Whatever. the difference today. <laughs> Whatever it is, I don't know the difference. I don't really care. They worship demons. You worship demons, you're going to get cannibal marauders. I mean, that's a pretty... It's pretty straightforward, man. I don't know. You worship demons, you're going to get cannibal marauders. And, I mean, really, like, for the people that don't believe in spiritual stuff or demons or anything like that, and I, I see it, we'll be right to you. Um, but for the people that don't believe that, I mean, come on, man. Open your eyes. Like, this is – this cannot – like, you've got to be, like, the opposite of least durable. Like, b turning a blind eye toward the evidence. Um, I, I mean, you don't – you may get – you you may get an increase of crime – and some more assaults and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's got to be in your own brain. Something something has to click. It's got to be more than just coincidence to turn people into like straight up murdering, like murder hobo cannibals. Um, and, and then yeah, you especially see the history, and it's like okay, well the history is worshiping demons and practicing you know this like hoodoo weird stuff um, with like blood rituals and sacrifice, and it turns into like the the worst like base things of humanity um the, you have to think there's a correlation um somewhere hey Nate. Uh, yeah edwin go ahead i, I saw sure. your hand a minute ago yeah no, no problem no i appreciate the discussion now this is something again i know that this is speculation i'm just going to suggest this and ask what your thoughts are something i've been thinking about lately and i know you're not the biggest fan of eschatology so i'm just suggesting Okay, just asking a question. So in Revelation 13, we read about the image made to the beast, right? And the false prophet, who's the second beast, right? He, uh, let's hold on a second. Yeah, he has power to give life unto the image of the beast. And it does two things. The image of the beast should both speak, right? And to cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So this image can speak. Somehow, I don't know how this is going to be done. It's going to speak. It's a, it seems like it's an inanimate thing that is given life by the false prophet in some way. I'm not sure how it does this. But it also has the ability to kill people. 
Now, some have suggested this is some kind of AI um, that will be able to track people and kill people that don't worship um, itself, basically worship the image. How do you think that life is given? Again, I, I know you're not a fan of SPL. I'm just curious. I don't know. I'm speculating. How do you think life is given to this image by the false prophet? So, so again, ahead. Revelation is a large compilation of quotes from the Old Testament. Um, the way in which the um, the ancient priests of pagan religions would quote unquote give their idols life is there'd be like a little door inside of the idol and they would go in there like the great wizard of Oz and they would talk to people from the idol with a with like basically a you know like a what we would think of as like a trumpet not a not a trumpet and in musical instrument but like you know like a like one of the cones you like kind of yeah like if you just make a paper cone and you can use it as a, me a megaphone like you know that kind of thing but it was made out of brass um we we actually have ruins of these things that we can see where the priests would go in and so that when it says gives it life this is the kind of thing that it's referring to directly from the ancient near east so it wouldn't it actually give it life because again the only one who is the life giver is god and and because he is the necessary being, contingent beings cannot make life. That's why abiogenesis is such nonsense and will never, ever happen. But to say it's, yeah, to say like it, it still gets some kind of life is like a cheap knockoff, though. Sure. Like, a, you know, what, like like Satan and Jesus are referred to as the morning star or the light, right? Like, so Jesus would be the original and like Satan would, or Lucifer would be the counterfeit. Um so, and I mean, it's like, it's kind of like the, you know, the, the mock Trinity, right? It's like, you know, you have father, son, and spirit, but then you have like, what, Satan, the antichrist, the false prophet. Um, so it's like, it, it, like everything that they do is like a, a cheap imitation or a knockoff of the original. But uh, T, I, I sent you an invite. Let me know if you can't get up. But real quick, let me give uh, Chris an education in demonology. So Chris, <clears throat> um, the difference in voodoo and hoodoo <laughs> is as follows. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you laughing with us or at us or someone? No, I'm laughing with else? you. Like, <laughs> let me give Chris a quick education in demonology. This is a great line. It's good. It's good. <laughs> you sounded a little echoey. I thought maybe you're like talking to like a, an, an employer or something. Anyway, okay. So, voodoo, also known as voodoo or voodun, is a religion that originated in West Africa um, and was later spread to the Americas through the slave trade. It has its roots in the beliefs and practices of the Fon Iwe and Yoruba people of West Africa, voodoo was brought to the United States primarily through the slave trade and has developed, uh, has since developed into distinct religious practices. Voodoo is an organized religion with a pantheon of deities called Loa, who serves as intermediaries between believers and a supreme creator. Huh, does that sound like Catholicism? What? Uh, voodoo practitioners believe in the power of Loa, who can be called upon to assist in various aspects of life like saints, <clears throat> such as healing, protection, and guidance. Voodoo ceremonies include rituals, offerings, and music to invoke the loa and connect with the spiritual realm. Hoodoo, uh, the hoodoo that you do when you do what you do, hoodoo, known as, <laughs> also known as root work or conjure, is an African-American folk magic tradition that originated in the southern United States it is not a religion, but what, rather a set of beliefs and practices that can be incorporated into various religious and spiritual traditions, such as Christianity and voodoo. So you can use it. Oh, that's like the prosperity gospel. You can use hoodoo as the force for the religion of voodoo. Okay, anyways, uh, hoodoo draws from West and Central African spiritual traditions, as well as Native American and European influences. Practitioners of hoodoo use various tools, such as candles, herbs, roots, talismans to cast spells, provide protection, and influence events in their favor. Hoodoo is often associated with folk healing, fortune telling, and the use of charms and amulets. Nothing strange about that. Unlike mm. voodoo, Voodoo does not have a specific pantheon of deities or organized religious structure. In summary, voodoo is a religion of uh, with a pantheon of deities, while hoodoo is folk magic tradition that can be incorporated into various re uh, religious and spiritual practices. Both hoodoo and voodoo have African roots and share similarities in their beliefs and practices, uh, but they are distinct spiritual traditions who both knowingly or not worship Satan. That was my ending, not theirs. That's yeah, that's hundred percent accurate. Hey, uh, I was wondering if we could uh, drill down a little bit more into that comment you just made, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, which one? Uh, Christopher, I think the uh, the a the abiogenesis comment. 
Oh, about it being nonsense because only God is the life giver. Yes, we could drill down that into that. Would that be all right? Uh, sure, and I'm going to say the basis is because, you know, the Christian claim that Chris just made that, you know, only God is the life giver, therefore there can be no other life giver in the truest sense. Not like, you know, baby sloth can't have, uh, you know, mummy sloth can't have baby sloth and say that's life, but ultimately it's it's only sustained and originated by God. So it's going to be drilled down to a claim, one that I agree with, though. But go ahead, well, no, Chris. But that's, that's the weird part, right, is because abiogenesis happened according to Christians, right? Okay, okay, so I, I, Chris, I'll continue to speak for you. Um, sure, so the, the Christians totally believe in an abiogenesis event. Um, yeah. That is when God, Yeah, yeah, uh, when God created That's life, when God right? created yeah. Um But Chris is disputing the abiogenesis, like, uh, you know, perpetuated by evolutionary biology that okay. says it came from some so, other way other than right. God. So let's discuss that for a second. Is there some limitation on uh, autocatalytic chemical reactions that I'm unaware of? What was the first thing you said? Is there some limitation on autocatalytic chemical reactions that I'm unaware of? Well, yeah, clearly, that. because you have not created a biogenesis unless that. that wait, hold on it. a second. That wasn't the question. The question wasn't, <laughs> did I hold on a second? The question wasn't, did I recreate a process that takes millions of years to do? Oh, that no, wasn't no, no, the no, no, no. That is not what we're talking about again. No, hold know. on a second. Hold on a second. That okay. wasn't the question. Let's okay. let's address the question I'm asking. Right? Uh -huh. Is there some limitation to autocatalytic chemical reactions that would prevent life from forming? Yes. What is that limitation? I don't know. Wait, Doesn't matter. Well, I mean, based on the worldview, the, the limitation would be, I mean, the claim would be it didn't, ha it, it could happen theoretically, but it didn't happen. And then you will say, why didn't it happen? And I will say, because only God is the life giver who specifically gave life in a very specific way recorded in Genesis. So even though in theory, you know, lightning or static electricity could have sparked something, there, there would be nothing preventing it other than God didn't do it. So it didn't happen, even though it theoretically could happen. It's just okay, a bunch of so, claim, so, claim battles. So, I mean, but that's a different claim. You're, you're directly contradicting Christopher's claim now, right? Well, I don't think Christopher fleshed his out all the way. And I, I don't think Christopher so. I said think I agree could, with him. It, no, Christopher said it could never happen. And no, you're, well, I, I would say, so allow me, you're to, allow me to be more specific. To you, it could never happen outside of the necessary being doing the abiogenesis. In other words, there is no random process that is going to generate abiogenesis. There is no man-directed process that is going to generate abiogenesis. Okay, so first Period. of all, I would agree that there's no random process that's going to direct to that's going to result in abiogenesis. Autocatalytic chemical reactions are not random processes, though. So that's the part that I'm like a little bit hung up on, right? And Nathan seems to get it, right? Nathan seems to understand that, of course, autocatalytic chemical, chemical uh, autocatalytic chemical reactions could result in life. The reason for that is because um, when chemicals fall into lower energy states, they form more complex macromolecules. They increase in complexity absent a man, absent a, a god. It's just what chemicals do, right? So Nathan is correct in, in pointing out that it could happen. Now, I, you know, you have a view that it didn't. That's a totally separate claim. I'm just pushing back on this idea that it couldn't because we know that it can, right? Oh, we I, do. I, I, so can you prove it to me in a lab? Show me in a lab and sure. recreate a biogenesis. Go ahead. No, 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 hold right on here. a second. Again, the endeavor here isn't to recreate the process. The endeavor here is to describe and explain the process. No, They're two not. different the, things. No, right? the endeavor, in order to prove your hypothesis, you have to recreate the process. Okay, and, and I'm, tell, and I'm telling you that proof, that's incorrect. Not I'm telling you well, that's I mean, incorrect. And that's I'm fine. We can argue about it all explain, you want. But, and but allow if, me in to order to convince me that abiogenesis is going to be a thing in the not God worldview, okay, but you are going to, to have why to make correct, life. It doesn't to matter if you think it's correct. It doesn't matter. That's your opinion. No one knows what's happening. No one knows what's happening. Hold on a second. T, I just wanted to say that I know you think Chris and I were contradicting. But but we're not. We're saying the same thing different ways. Like I'm allowing. No, no, no hold on. I'm hold allowing. On, Nate. Hold on. I, 
That's ridiculous. Or, I'm going to take, I'm gonna take a line from Michael. Ago. Did the middle of did the middle of my sentence interrupt the beginning of yours? Thank you, Michael. No, no, uh, Nate, but, Nate, hold on a second. T, it, oh my God, you got to let us. You ask a question, you got to let us. No, get I, I know, out. I know, but I'd like to uh, just give me like ten seconds. Oh, okay, I can't. I can't. We could try again in a little bit. That was that was three minutes of torture. I'm telling you, we're saying these same things because Chris is not allowing for anything theoretically to happen, and I am saying theoretically it could, but it didn't. So we're saying the same thing different ways. So I, I just we're taking a break from that. Um, I, I want to clarify something, uh, Michael. That's twice. Your um, who, who did you get that quote from? The middle of my sentence interrupting the beginning of yours. I told that to someone the other day. I told I, I gave my Canadian friend attribution. And they, they love that now. And it, it served me well just now. But um, I, I got to correct myself. When you're wrong, you're wrong. Um, apparently, Haiti is not primarily practitioners of hoodoo, but voodoo, which is a variant of voodoo. So um, there you go, everyone. When you're wrong, you're wrong. So um, anyway, Chris, that gets me to what I wanted to say. And, and T, if you still stick around, we can try again in a minute. But that was, that was just chaotic. Um, so even people who don't believe in the spirit realm or stuff like that. If you're like a, a low, low level atheist or non-religious person, that's just run of the mill. It's kind of like, um, you know, the abortion debate or uh, critical theory. Um, the, the people at the top, the like echelon, high echelon society, society that produce this stuff, they have their reasons, which are much more nefarious and devious than what they're presenting. So then by the time the normal, the normal people of the world get it, they latch on to some virtue that's being signaled like it's, it's empowering, it's my choice, or, or I'm an oppressed person, I deserve this. Like they latch on to the talking points, while the people at the top who, who started this stuff, they have a much more nefarious reason for doing this. Like, you know, the, the depopulation effort, the destruction of society, uh, the getting rid of, of the nuclear family, which usually among like, you know, the top, the top like billionaire, like ultra, ultra elite class. Um, and I, I'm not talking about like, you know, conspiracies, like, you know, you think these people exist and they don't, but like, you know, if you just read some of the um, either investigative journalism or like straight up interviews, um, they'll have like, they try, I, and they're kind of cryptic in how some of these like, super high society people will say their things, but you can use a little discernment and kind of read between the lines. And that kind of gets into like the Haiti stuff. And it seems like the higher and higher up you go um, among the top tier of, of humanity, like, you know, the, the top richest, most influential people that really, really exert a lot of influence on the world around them or, or at large, they see it as like a battle between literally God and the devil and Satan powers. And specifically, like whenever you find people that will talk about this stuff, it always focuses on the Christian God. I've never heard anyone say that they put this focus on Allah or any other deity or Zeus. So even, even to the atheists that, you know, question spirituality or deny spirituality and gods and deities and all this other stuff, um, the, the people who you would think would be more in the know with more resources, more access to like, you know, um, maybe classified material or, or secret lost text and things like that, because they just have money and resources that they can get these things. They seem to really, really believe this stuff. And in almost every case that I'm aware of, they feel like they're, they're kind of like trying to serve a dark force or dark, dark power. Because when, when you hear some of the interviews and them talk, they feel like they've done so much wrong that they can never be, have a shot at some sort of redemption. Um, and even if they don't use Christian jargon, I, I mean, I may, I may do that, but you, you really can pick it out like, like a, a, like a haystack made of needles. It's just, it's just so easy to discern that, that they're kind of focusing on, um, well, now they have to do the ultimate bad to to hurt this god specifically the christian god of the bible um to get in good with this dark force or dark power and they might not say lucifer by name uh, but but you know that's who they're talking about and when they talk about god they reference the bible and the christian god so it's just interesting right so even if you reduce it to an incredible coincidence it is incredibly coincidental that these top like billionaire elite ruling class of people with access to all this stuff that we'll never know um their stuff, like even transgenderism, and I'll stop my rant in a minute, but even when you get to transgender stuff, they try to propel it as, oh, well, these people are going to kill themselves if we don't allow this, uh, you know, genital mutilation and all this other stuff. And, you know, we have to, um, we have to do this for empowerment and to be your true self, while what they're worried about is doing these things to, like, as young as children as they possibly can, because the younger the child is, they see that as the most innocent form of life on this earth, and that, they believe, is what go is going to strike at the heart of this god 
of the Bible, not any other God, but this God of the Bible and hurt this God the most, which is going to earn them some kind of like demonic brownie points with Satan or this dark force or dark entity that they reference um, for for the afterlife. So, again, it doesn't it doesn't prove anything. It doesn't um, doesn't mean any of this is true. But for the atheist that's just run of the mill talking about abortion is choice and, you know, transgenderism, transgenderism and surgeries are empowering and, you know, cut off everyone's genitals, make them a different biology. It's fine. Um, that should at least give someone a little pause to head scratch and be like, you know, maybe I'll take a step back. It doesn't. It's like an ad populum fallacy, but it's not. It's, it's, it's like, a, I don't know, ad Illuminati fallacy. So it doesn't mean these people with unlimited resources and unlimited power and access to secret documents and classified information and research that we'll never know. It doesn't mean they're right, but you should really consider that point a little bit, that if you go zoomed out 30,000 feet, that these people who should presumably be more in the know want to cause harm to children because they see that as the younger, the better, because they're more innocent, and they have to strike at the heart of the Christian God specifically um, to hurt this God, to give them like brownie points with this dark force. Um, yeah, okay, anyways, um, and I think a lot of that is where it gets into like, you know, Vadu in Haiti and cannibals and things like that. It may, you may think it's to kick out the colonists for a better way of life. And by the way, how's that going? Um, but in reality, I, I think going out a few levels zoomed out, um, the people who undoubtedly like caused this political upheaval didn't do it just to overthrow a nation or a country. They did it to cause harm to God's creation, and the younger, the better. Okay, uh, Chris, do you have any thoughts on my soapbox? I've been wanting to talk about that for some time, so. Uh, no, I mean, like, you know, Haiti is Haiti because they've got demon worship. I mean, that's, that's their deal. Michael, um, despite thinking, wow, these people are nuts. Um, would that legitimately make you think, you know, if everything, you know, I said was true, which what, what I said isn't supposed to be truth, but the, the true part is, you know, the people you occasionally will, will be able to find who talk about this stuff, uh, things like that, that, that much is true. Um, not, not all the claims necessarily, but that people have made these claims. Um, would you say that that's worth a little investigating and I don't know, or nope, just nuts, no further investigation needed. So. I, I tried really hard to listen to like wh what you said and stuff like that, but I feel like I came in way too late to this portion of the party to talk super intelligently about it. Um, I uh, I know I know only know a little bit, like kind of very periphery stuff about what's going on in Haiti. Um, I know that there is this kind of tradition steeped in, um, I guess, what you would call the occult. Um, I just look at it as like. You know, practice like I, I think it's all it's like it's all made up nonsense right like the occult is nonsense god is nonsense it, like it's all just like they're doing what they think they need to do to do the things they want to do to accomplish the goals they want to accomplish whatever um i don't think there's any truth to any of it um but beyond that i guess when you say the goals that, like i'm i'm not sure 100 percent what you mean when you say the goals they're trying to accomplish that didn't make any sense to me. And that's probably because I came in too late into the conversation. Uh, well, the part I was kind of wanting you to address uh, wasn't so much Haiti because we talked about that a little bit before you got in the room. But it was, it was more the bigger picture, like j just whatever you'll hear, um, you know, some of these like very, very top influential, like ridiculously wealthy, pe like basically people with accesses to access to resources across the board that we will never have. Um, if you haven't heard any any of those people speak or an interview, can you give me some examples? Can you give me some examples? Yeah, I, I was gonna say like um, I, I will be happy to send you some. Um, I, I have your email, so I'll, I'll have to I'll have to like you know bring up some of the uh, clips. It'll take me a little bit to find, but um, if you're someone who hasn't heard any of this stuff ever, then yes, I'll, I'll happily send you stuff. But it will range from like either an investigative journalist, um, you know, who who kind of like get people to talk kind of off off the record, and then I guess it leak it somehow or it gets leaked. Um, to sometimes in interviews, like uh, off the top of my head, I mean, th this isn't th like you, you've all know Harari, like that guy and like maybe Klaus Schwab to a lesser degree because they talk more about like world policy and economics and, and some of the stuff is mixed in. So that, that's not a great example, but that's the most prominent one because they're like in the news constantly for saying just crazy crap. Um, but, but to a lesser degree, them. But when you really hear people talk on, on a deeper level and even 
maybe more influential than them. That's the kind of stuff you'll hear. So when you just sit back and listen, they seem to talk about things that you don't have access to and you get the real sense that um, it, it's like critical theory, right? Like in the 1800s, like that guy, like no one needs to worry about his interpretation. He tells you, it, it, I forget the guy's name. I think Chris knows it was like a French guy in the 1800s that invented like, you know, came up with critical theory. Um, and now we have the oppressed oppressor narrative. So everyone is focused on like one poison branch of that, which is critical race theory. And um, the person who started it, it was an affront of God. It was to destroy the church and destroy, uh, to get the destruction of the church and to nullify the church, the Christian church, by the way, he didn't go after mosques or any other religion. It's always Christianity for some reason. So he wanted to neutralize the Christian church and the Christian God. And the way he saw to do that, uh, there's like five ways. But one of those ways was about racial um, oppressor, oppressed narratives. And that is what people focus on today. Well, so they're worried about racial inequality, which, I mean, that could be a concern. I'm not saying it's not. But when you use that and, and get people riled up about racial injustice and, you know, seeing racial injustice where it actually isn't, it becomes like the boy who cried wolf. And then when there actually is racial inequality and justice, people are turning a deaf ear because you've cried racist so many times. But the point, that was one example. So all the people are focused on one branch of one tree that this guy had when they're not thinking this has anything to do with God or families or anything like that. But the guy who perpetuated this and started it, that was his whole goal. And so we see by shouting this and then oppressed oppressor, and then it can destroy the family structure when we get into like the patriarchy and feminism and things like that. It destroys the family, which in turn uh, causes problems in the church, which in turn causes problems with Christianity and then the belief in the Christian God. So it all traces back to these people who start this stuff. And if you didn't really like pay attention or just read their writings because they kind of like tell you up front, you just have to go back a couple hundred years and read it. Um, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about, Michael. So people that are blinded to the forest by a few trees. So um, that's the kind of places I was going with that. Oh, okay. I, I think that um, people in, like, it is very difficult, if not impossible, to uh, eliminate our biases. I think sometimes we want to see the trees in the forest that we want to see, and we don't see the trees in the forest that we don't want to see. Um, and I think that has to do a lot with our, with our biases. 99.999% of the stuff that you just mentioned, I don't invest any time in. I, I don't, you know, I don't even give a first thought to, let alone a second. Um, so I'm not sure I can really comment on it intelligently. Like, I mean, what, so, but when you're talking about this kind of elite class, you know, stuff that, you know, like things that, you know, we'll never have access to, there are, there are as many, if not more, people um, on the right, for example, that have access, um, just like there are lots of people on, on the left, right, that, that, that have access to things we'll, we'll never have access to, right? So you may say, oh, you know, somebody like, um, you know, Bill Gates, for example, right, all this money, was, you know, we'll never have access to that kind of money. Well, I'll also never have access to the kind of money that Oral Roberts has, right? Um, so there are, there, there, there are, there are people on, on both sides of that fence, so I think we have to be careful not to say, you know, it's the wealthy elites on the left, blah, 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 because there are tons of wealthy elites on the right, blah, 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 that are also trying to push forward the narratives and the things that, that they want to push forward as well, right? And, and you, you, you have these types of, of, of ebbs and, and flows in, in society where people will tend, to, will tend more to uh, social issues and then, you know, it, it kind of goes – I don't want to say cyclical because I'd hope for all, I'd hope for more constant forward progression, but I think ebb and flow is kind of the best way to to put it. But most of the stuff that you you talk about, like I I don't spend any time thinking about. It. Okay, noted. And uh, I do have something else that's more closely related to your your uh, home world in a minute. And yeah, I, I mean I didn't even mean like you know wealthy right and wealthy um, left. I, I mean we're we're talking like r ridiculous, like top tier, right? Like the the royal family, like um. Uh, you know, who's the guy that just died? Like the Rothschilds, like, you know, like not just like a couple billionaires here and there that have right or left leaning politics, but like, you know, the like Uber, like not, not just wealth, but like wealth, influence, power, 
um, you know, that type of thing, like dynasties, right? That like, you know, formed, formed Europe, formed the West, like for like actually had significant influence in like the planet. Um, so, so people on that level that, that like, kind of transcends right and left. But, um, yeah. Have you ever, have, have you ever heard of a film? Uh, so you know who Mike Myers is? Austin Powers? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. So he's, he's, he's too, right. Yep. Yeah. He, he grew up in Scarborough, the same city I grew up in. Um, and uh, he put out a movie not too long ago called The Pentaveret. Um, and it, it just like when he started talking about these these groups of people, it um, so the, the whole idea of the of the movie The Pentaveret came from uh, came from the story in uh, in a movie called So I Married an Axe Murder. Did you ever see that? It, um, it's hysterical. I, I know it, the movie. I don't know that I've seen the whole thing. Yeah, it's another Mike Myers movie. Anyway, so Mike Myers um, takes his girlfriend over to meet his parents. He also plays his father in that movie, and his and his his father goes on about this. Uh, his father goes on about this group called the Pentaveret, um, and you know he's like the you know secret society that you know secretly runs the whole world. Um, and so he says, you know, who's in the Pentaveret? And he says, you know, he's like, you know, the, um, he says it's I think it's the Queen. Uh, the Vatican, the Gettys, the Rothschilds, and Colonel Sanders before he went tits up, um, and this is, is you know kind of busted everybody busted the laughter right. As the thing you know it's like is it you know it's like how can you hate the Colonel, uh, and he goes on this 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 rage about it and stuff like that. But I I don't believe there is this. Um, uh, let's use a a, um, a popular word cabal. Of people that secretly run anything, I just I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Yeah, and we can move on. And I I, I think we're I mean if we had a lot a lot more time to talk, we could probably get more synced up. Um, and also like you know if you cared, like you don't you don't invest a lot of time in it. And no, I, I'm not saying I, I mean I'm sure there's a group somewhere that thinks they secretly like do stuff. Um, I, I I'm not going that far. I'm just talking about like people who undisputably like you know have like dynasties and you know have have really shaped like world policy things like that right like things that you like the, the royal family right i mean no one's going to say that's a secret cabal but no one's going to deny that they haven't held significant influence over over years and years and years um of influencing the world around them like you know india uh the india china and trade and and uh, you know western civilization so i mean you know the, the royal family in britain has is not secret um but no one can say they haven't significantly shaped like half the planet um, yeah, over a and, and so, I am and I am not a fan of I'm not a fan of the royal. I, I mean, I've, I think I've said this before. Like, I, I think the idea of monarchies is is just ridiculous. It's stupid beyond ridiculous, right? The, the idea that because I was born into this family, I am better than another person is just is 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 dumb beyond dumb, right? Um, my my mom, um, she was she loved the royal family, all this kind of stuff. And when the the last time the queen came to. Canada when she was alive and stuff like that. She was like, oh, you know, I want to go. And she wanted to know if I would go. I'm like, I'm not going. And, and she's like, oh, well, what about this? Whole? I said, if we get a space down front, I said, if we were lucky, let's, let's say we could get a space down front. I said, she's going to walk by. I said, I will not bow to another human being. I said, this, this person is not better than me. And I, I hate everything about the, the royal family. I hate the fact that, you know, like the, <clears throat> they've had to be beaten out of every country they've ever gone into at either the barrel of a gun or the, or the point of a sword. Um, I, I am not a fan of the, I think that they should just be dissolved, take all of their money and give it to everyone from all over the world that they've taken it from over centuries. You're not well, going to hey, get any from that. If you were, if you were a Hebrew child, uh, you, you had been thrown in the fiery furnace back in the day, not bowing down to another human. Uh, anyways, so Michael, before because Chris, I think wanted to wanted to go back to the a biogenesis being dumb event, um, so you know get ready for pain. But um, before we do that, I, I was shared a headline earlier um, that Canada. I, I don't know what news station it was, but in Canada, apparently some kind of government. I don't know if it's local or federal or what is encouraging Canadians to leave their key fobs in their unlocked car at night um, to make it easier for thieves to steal their car. Uh, because it will prevent them from coming in their house and robbing them. And they're like, th their case they're making is, no, no, they don't really want to hurt anyone, and they don't want to break into your house and cause you you know, trouble. Um, they just want your car. So in order to prevent them from going to the trouble that they don't want to do and like you know, robbing your house and breaking into your house, 
just leave your keys in your car so they can have what they want and leave you in peace. Is have you heard about that? Is that remotely true? I mean, it was uh, it, it looked like it was from like a, a you know like a, what we would call like CBS or you know NBC like like a a reputable local type news channel doing a report. Um, is that true? So I was just looking it up. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, this is one of so there was another bill that you were talking about last week. Oh, you know they were saying oh you know the Canadian government wants to try to do this, and there was actually um, a report done by CBC News, uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, um, that that story along with the one you just said is uh, is is actually it was actually put out there on uh, on on X. Uh, it's actually a fake story. They're trying to find out who put it out there, but no, it's not real at all. So if they find out who did it, they'll throw them in jail under the 62 bill for hate speech? <laughs> yeah, probably. Just... Um, yeah, it, it's uh, – who is this? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not a real story, but hey, it doesn't matter. It was interesting. I mean, you know, I didn't ha I didn't verify it, so I asked if it was true. Um, and, and you know, I, I would be, you know, that's one thing, right? You hear things, and you know, like the things, like I, I guess I was talking about earlier, that was interest for me to like kind of, you know, look into enough um, to to try to verify, like you know, the um, the the ultra elite class, like tracing everything back to good and evil and God and Satan, um, the Christian God, mind you. Um, that was important enough for me to kind of look into and verify as well as I could, so I did. Um, the Canadians leaving their keys in their cars. Um, it's interesting, but wasn't important enough for me to like try to verify. So I asked you, which I guess, you know, you're trying to on the spot verify. So yeah, I was just, yeah, I did a, a quick bit. little, I did a quick little Google search and there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a site so, that I use sometimes to look up basically fake stories and yeah, anyway, but no, and it, then do, you, do you, well, well, do you, on that line, do you verify um, what the verifier says? Like, do you ever fact check the fact checkers? So like if they, if you go to it and put it in, it's just like fake news. Like, do you ask their sources? Like, do you try to find out what their sources are to verify that it is fake and they're not just telling you it's fake? I think it depends on how, on how much you care. Kind of, <laughs> no, no, no. I think, well, a little bit, but I think it also depends on how, how ridiculous the claim seems. Uh, I did bookmark. I did bookmark what you just said to see if I can find other sources that will also say it's it's it, uh, it's it's a made up story. But but going back to what you said about the whole now there is there has been in certain uh, in some cities like Edmonton for example, which is in Alberta, Western Canada, um, car thefts have been going like just nuts, bonkers, crazy. And there was the there was a report done basically saying you know because there's there's some about well, like people stealing cars, like, you know, stealing a car in the middle of the night, stuff like that. Uh, but also people trying to either carjack or to basically, you know, run up to people in the parking lots and say, Hey, give me the keys to your car. And my wife and I were talking about this and she's like, you know, what would you do in a situation like that? I'm like, here, take the, you know, it's like, here, take the keys. You want my wallet too? Here's my cell phone. I don't care. Take yeah, it all. I'm being a good Canadian, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just like, like, take it all. It's like, I, cause all of that stuff is replaceable, right? Yeah. Don't care. Do the carjackers um, say please? Do you think? Um, like, Give no, me your well, car, no, please. <laughs> but but they probably apologize after they've left. Like as they're leaving, they're probably like, "Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I don't want to do this to you." <laughs> yeah. It's like then that's don't. <laughs> yeah, that's probably more the case. But um, uh, yeah. Anyway. Well, uh, uh, Chris. Yeah, you. Uh, hang on. Let's see what else. Uh, keep things in mind if anyone wants to talk about this. I think we only have one more thing or two more things. So if anyone wants, uh, wants to bring up another topic after Chris uh, talks about abiogenesis, um, let's no, see. I think we we're have... done with abiogenesis. So T and I are going to more fully explore that together in another room later on. This okay, great. Go way beyond the scope here. So. Okay, so the last political thing I will say today <laughs> is the last two things is just to mention. Um, anyone hear about UK banning puberty, blocker, puberty blockers for kids because they find out it's cancer causing and dangerous um, while the, um, you know, United States is still all about it. Um, anyway, just a little tidbit. And the last thing is the Boeing airplanes. And I've, I've had my own run in recently with um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that's one of those other things where on its face, it sounds good. It's like, hey, you're including everyone. You're being good. Everyone's equal. But the reality is things like Boeing's wheels fall off mid-flight um, and airplane doors blow open because they focus so much on DEI. Um, that it, it, it 
is her Achilles heel, and it ends up making things not equal at all, but it just destroys what they already had. So um, I, I've been watching, and you can verify these. Look up Boeing, uh, you know, Boeing whistleblowers. There was one yesterday from Wichita, Kansas, um, that I saw, and uh, someone from South Carolina in a Boeing factory, and um, Al Jazeera. Uh, they have did their own independent, like, investigative journalism, and talked to a bunch of uh, what they say, like, 15 employees, um, kind of secretly, like, uh, from Boeing, and they were asking them about what happened, and they were saying specifically. I, I may mess up some facts, but it was like the 787 airliner that's supposed to be the like you know prize gem of airplanes um that is whenever that came out is when they started pushing like dei like super hard and um out of like 15 employees who were like e either in maintenance inspection or building the thing they asked if they would fly in boeing airplanes and they're like absolutely not so 10 out of the 15 um felt the flaws and what they observed in either people not having the skills um the lack of training the lack of caring and also like doing drug deals um, on the clock and doing drugs instead of building the stupid airplane um, was too much for them. And they're like, no, based on this 10 out of 15 Boeing employees um, that had like firsthand accounts of what was going on um, would not be comf uh, confident to fly on Boeing airplanes or at least that the 787 or 89 or whatever it was. Um, and I just thought, you know, I've had recently my own DEI issues because there's this um, place I use for online distribution of certain things like music stuff. And it's based in Brooklyn, New York. Yippee. Um, so I've used them for a while and I didn't have a problem. This time I had a problem. They sent me incorrect, um, incorrect tax, uh, tax stuff. And I'm like, what the heck are you doing? Like, I can't file my taxes like this. Um, you need to correct this. And what I, it is almost impossible. Like they, they pretty much only communicate by email and it can take like up to a week to get a response. So I'm like, guys, tax time is coming soon. Um, you need to fix this. And all I get is like an automated message and eventually someone calls and they're like, oh, this could take our finance team, you know, up to three weeks. I'm like, are you serious? So I've been dealing with this over a month. And after three weeks, um, you know, I give them the end of what they say. I check back in. I'm like, guys, you really need to get on the ball. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll give this three more weeks. I'm like, are you serious? So um, I, I started like doing everything. Like I'm, I'm like, you know, about to hire a lawyer to like just, you know, force someone to pay attention. Um, all because they give me incorrect data. And then I go into their website and I'm looking under contact information. You know what I find? No contact information. All I find is an incorrect address that I later found was incorrect when I tried to send them certified mail. Um, so it's an incorrect address listed on the front page of their website. Um, and also, Half, half their homepage takes up like where you know help would be it is all like diversity equity inclusion stuff and not just where you like you're like oh right wingers are just saying that no it says diversity equity inclusion so their whole page is blown up with this stuff and i think guys i can't say it's directly correlated to your inaccurate accounting um but if you're focusing your attention so much on this stuff um, that it is it is affecting your actual financials and accounting and abilities, um, either because your attention is diverted, you're distracted, or because you're using this and you're hiring severely unqualified people who cannot deal with numbers accurately, and it is like causing me great problems in my life. Um, anyway, so so that made me want to hit that extra hard because it seems like Boeing is the aerospace equivalent to to that. So. Um, all right, that's my sob story. That's that's the last political thing I'll say. Anyone want to comment on that, and then we can talk about something more holy? It, it seems to me that in a situation like that, I mean, like we, with you know, it's like with what I do, right? There, you know, there's a, I don't want to say that there's a there's a focus, but we well we pay attention to things like that, but there has to be. Um, like there has to be separation, right? So, I mean, so for, for, for something like, um, you know, diversity, uh, inclusion, things like that, like that's what HR is for, right? So, you know, there's an HR department that takes care of those types of things, but like HR <clears throat> has, has nothing, like not a single solitary thing to do with what I uh, go out and do in the field, right? Nothing. Why? Because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Um, they're HR specialists, 
right? So it seems to me that the company that you're you're dealing with doesn't have the correct people in place in certain areas to to do. And and who knows, right? I mean, you know, the the story that you told, <clears throat> like we have no more information than that, right? But so who knows? But it sounds to me like whatever this company is just doesn't have the right people in the right places within the right departments to do the job that they have to do. You know, like Chris is a business owner too, right? So, I mean, like as a business owner, he has to put people in certain places. You know, if a person is a, is a specialist in, in field A, he's not going to have them working in field B, right, or C. He's going to have them doing what it is that they, that they do. It sounds to me like that's the issue with, you know, this whatever company you're dealing with. I agree. Michael, you know, I am so happy <laughs> that even though we are could not probably be farther on our political sides, um, you, you do bring a lot of common sense um, to the table, and uh, I appreciate that greatly. So, um, yeah, even though you're so veer left and I'm pretty far gone right, um, I, I think common sense we, we generally have in common. So, um, shout out. Um, Chris, what's up? Oh, the other thing you were mentioning about quickly was just the, the whole, did you want to talk more about the puberty blockers thing? Um, I, I mean, I, I guess, I, I, so I, I have relatively limited information. Um, I, I guess I, I just thought it was worth pointing out because typically people consider Europe to be more, more liberal and, and, um, you know, um, advanced and more, um, forward leaning than, than the rest of the West, than, than like America and whatever. So, um, the fact that even they, like the European places were usually considered more liberal, um, and left are starting to crack down most over some of the, uh, you know, not transgender people, but the medicine and the medical procedures, because they're increasingly doing more and more studies and finding these things detrimental and unsafe, either from mental health, like it doesn't necessarily prevent people from suicides, but it can drive them um, af after they find that all that glitters is not gold on the other side. It can exasper exasperate suicidal risks and cause it um, rather than preventing it um, all the way to the actual medicines being used and hormone blockers and, and medicines um, that it, it seems to be causing a lot of, you know, based on people citing sources and studies. Um, so I, I have independently verified this, but I mean, it's, it's the governments are saying this. So, I mean, it, it's the governments. Um, yeah. So they, uh, and, I mean, and it's causing like, it's causing cancer and like health issues. Yeah. That's about all I know. Yeah. Yeah. So my understanding was, is that, I mean, and this doesn't have anything to do with left, right, progressive, liberal or anything else. Um, the NHS or the national health service, basically, um, great Britain's version of health, like the healthcare that, that we have in Canada um, and that you guys seem to think is terrible. Um, there, there was basically some, there were some longitudinal studies that had come out. And what they found was, is some of their initial findings from years ago um, were not correct. So they did some more studies. And what they found was, and I don't know that this is, this is for all the puberty blockers, because I'm, I'm not a doctor, right? I only play one on TV sometimes. Um, but that some of, the, some of the medicines that were being um, prescribed either had the, possi like, had the possibility of uh, causing health problems later in the future and or, because it wasn't just one or the other, and or were not as efficacious as originally thought or believed to be because of the initial studies. So what they did was in the, in the, in the interest of preserving public health, what they said is this stuff isn't as good as we once thought it was. And it's not necessarily doing the things we thought it was going to do either. So we're going to stop prescribing it until we either come up with something better or learn more about this stuff. And so, and so that, that's what it was that, the, that they did. So it was, actually okay. a, it was actually a public health measure. M Michael. Which is a good thing, right? No, that's a complete cope. Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> Estrogen and testosterone are the quote-unquote medicines that were being prescribed. These are natural hormones in the human body. The, the problem that you're having is that you're laying your worldview on top once again, saying, oh, these weren't effective. Effective for what? Like changing one person's gender into the opposite gender? That there's no such thing. 
it's just delusion. And so to say that like, oh, well, you know, the, the natural estrogen or the natural testosterone just wasn't as effective. Effective in what? Like that, that's the question. Well, I was going to say, and I know Mark, um, yeah, hand raising's on again. Um, I, I turned it off because it was like blowing up earlier when I was trying to speak, and it was, it was just too many beeps. I couldn't concentrate. And I know Mark wanted to, I think, say something about this too. But, Michael, I was actually going to say, I mean, you know, I, I would agree probably for the same reasons, you know, Chris, if, if you, um, you know, tied him down would agree as far as a public health. And, uh, you know, is public health a good thing? Is stopping things that seem to be not helping and not in the interest of public health? Um, that's what I would say. Well, yeah, I think I, I, I could get behind that. Um, I, I, I mean, I also agree with what Chris is saying, but, you know, to bridge the gap there. Um, yeah, but un unfortunately, what Chris is just saying is factually incorrect because a quick little Google search finds a report released by the NHS stating um, – and, and, and unfortunately uh, for Chris, the word cope isn't used at all in here. It actually cites, it actually cites medical studies um, – that maybe well no Chris probably doesn't want to look at those, um, but it's like yeah, medical, medical studies, studies are usually cope for the reasons suggested. So I'm more likely, so I'm I am more likely personally to believe medical professionals than I am to believe Chris. Well, isn't uh, and, and I, I want to get Mark, I, I want to get Mark in here um, too because he so rarely speaks. But is, no, no, I'm, uh, I'm fine. I'm just listening. Oh, okay. Well. I'm, I thought you were, you were mentioning the hand raising thing because you wanted to speak, but okay, if you want to, just let us know. But isn't uh, I, I thought one of the issues um, is the synthetic hormones. Um, I didn't think all of these were coming from natural sources, and it was it was specifically the um, synthetic hormones and, and also other medicines and chemicals were um, really causing like specifically cancer was cited. Um, it, it would either be from the Netherlands, I don't know if it's UK or Netherlands, but like they specifically cited cancer and i thought it was because of the synthetic hormones because it, again it is just a counterfeit and it's not the real thing um does, if anyone else knows or if what you're reading michael can speak to that i'd be interested but i thought it was uh, based on synthetic stuff um a synthetic well, well yeah so there are yeah so and so there are lots of synthetic hormones that are used in these types of things and they're not only used for things like um for things like uh, gender affirmation uh for example um Ten, ah, ah, ah. I, we're I not going to let you get on. away with your your Marxist cope. It is well, not gender him, affirmation. Well, That's well, a well, ridiculous can, phrase. Well, like, can you let please him don't away. use that well, here. That's well, just that's hang, just huh? po spoiling Chris. and poisoning the conversation. You're killing my face. I want to respond too, but can you at least let him get away with a sentence? <laughs> yeah. So, Chris, send me your address. I'll get you some buttercream down there. Um, but <laughs> ah, I mean, um, you're just poisoning the well. I mean, why are we so even having this conversation? I'm you're not just poisoning, poisoning the, well. the well. I'm not poisoning the well at all. Don't use the names of fallacies you don't understand. So, you're um, poisoning oh, the well. That's exactly what you're doing right now. And you didn't answer what, my okay. you didn't answer my objection at all. Like I was about to. for what? It doesn't I matter if they're synthetic hormones, synthetic. You go uh, on. I'll, testosterone I'll, I'll or testosterone, like throat. synthetic estrogen. Chris, to do what? Maybe you need to go back to the diner. <laughs> so, for example, so for example, eleven years ago, when my wife and I were going through IVF treatments, she had to use a synthetic form of progesterone, which is another hormone, uh, in order to help the growth of follicles within her body, and. We had to sign. So, Chris, I'm actually agreeing with you. Like, honestly, like if you would just listen, we had to sign a form <clears throat> stating that we understood, <clears throat> pardon me, that the use of this synthetic hormone could have adverse health effects later in life. Like, I'm actually agreeing with you. Like, I, I'm trying to be charitable, but you need to pull your noggin out of your rectum just a little bit, friend. Um, well, to answer Chris's question, um, gen, uh, what was it? Um, effective for what? For changing, you know, biochemical reactions that, that will change people from one thing to another, even though... They're never going to be able to change their biological sex. They will be able to you to change and be effective um, for you know masking over it and and appearing as a different biological sex, even though they cannot change the root 
of their biological sex. So effective to that end, to answer Chris's yeah. question. And, and, and you're, and you're not going to get argument from me that sex is binary. Like sex, biological sex is binary. It is A or it is B. And nobody in the medical field disagrees with that either. Well, I wouldn't say that. Right? Um, I mean, there's, there's Turner syndrome, there's Klinefelter syndrome, there's Down syndrome. Those are also sex stereotypes, right? I, I'm speaking, and, and yeah, and there are also, like, uh, there are other types of medical conditions that affect, like, the, the biological sex. But I'm talking about, I was talking more in the mainstream, right? Either like male or female. I'm talking about in terms of this specific. Right, right, right. That's the XX and the XY karyotype. Yeah. I'm pointing that there's more. There's the XXX karyotype and the XXYY karyotype, right? Well, yeah, and you'll, and you'll have people that are like double X and double Y, absolutely. Right, yeah, right, and, and that's, that's another example of a karyotype, which means that sex isn't binary. There's like six, there's actually six mutations that don't kill the fetus in the wound, right? So again, it's, not, that's it's, not, just it's, not, it's not two, it's six. Right? That's just an illogical statement. Sex is binary. You can simply have uh, problems. These are, these are considered problems with the karyotypes. There's no such thing in any mammalian species as as more than a binary sex. That's in the last 30 years. That's a complete nonsensical statement that's just propaganda from Marxists. Okay, so what I'm pointing at is in biology, there's something called a sexual karyotype, right? Which is abbreviated sex, right? Sort of the sh shortening of that. Within the sexual karyotype, there are six variations, not two, that don't kill the, the fetus. It doesn't matter. They're not variations. They are problems. Well, to no, no, no. They are variations. Well, can, they are mutations. Well, no, just, they aren't. That is just to cope. It's just you're yeah, changing the language. Wait, 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 wait. Can, can we, can, D, can, can we just, can I just finish your... my thought, please? Would that be okay? What I'm saying uh, is that they are mutations to the sexual karyotype. And there are six different mutations that, that can occur that don't kill the fetus. That's all I'm saying. That's right? okay. great. So, so, and well, does well, that wait, mean wait, that wait, sex wait. is not binary? Wait, I'm going to go ahead and speak now. Yes. So, since, right. that's six six about, that's since, that's, since that's all you care about saying, and you've said it, let's play in your world for a little bit. Okay, let's just stipulate that for, for giggles. However, there's different categories of things we're talking about. So are you saying, like, you know, again, if we just say, fine, we'll give you that one. Um, what does that have anything to do with this topic? Because when we're talking about like transgenderism and going from, you know, male to female, um, that's like a different category of thought or topic because I have not heard anyone um, who is transgender saying they want it to be anything other than a male or female. Um, so even if we give you, which we're not, but for this conversation, if we give you what you're saying and say, sure, there's six um, biological sex types uh, or carrier types or whatever. Um, for this discussion about transgender issues, um, none of them I've ever heard of have said they wanted to be anything other than male or female. Um, of course. That was the right. no, nobody wants to be Down syndrome, right? So nobody what would wants be the relevance be, in bringing that Nobody up. wants to be – well, I think that you're – you know, that would be a conflation because transgenderism isn't about changing your sex. It's about changing your outward appearance, right? <laughs> which, wait, 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 wait. Which then, which then they conflate. So there, I mean, there could well, be a lot I, of I don't think so. I don't think so because the word like transgender is not. You know, there's there's transsexual, right? Which is this idea that you're you're going to change your sex, you're going to remove your penis or whatever, right? And and now you're going to have a vagina, right? Then there's transgender, which is this idea that yeah, I'm a I'm a guy, I've got a penis, but I'm going to wear lipstick and makeup and a dress. That's transgenderism, um, right? I, I, wait, I, I I believe. I believe that is an inversion, and all I would say is I, I'll, I think I can speak for Chris. We will completely take our hands off this and, and just tell you, you know, do as thou wilt um, it, with that claim. Oh, gosh, it was right before you said the last thing. It was, it was golden. Um, oh, yeah, if you, when you said it, it's not about uh, changing sex, it's about outward appearance, um, I, I, I mean, I don't want you to get beat up, but I, I would challenge you to go take that claim to a transgender person who, let's say, was a biological male and they wanted to um, trans just transition into a female, if you go tell them, hey, I know you really just uh, are concerned with your outward appearance and you're really a man, um, <laughs> that will not go well for you. So okay, me and so Chris will take Nate, our hands off please, and just let please you don't misunderstand me, we'll get punched Nate. in the throat. Dude. No, please don't misunderstand me here, Nate, because that wasn't my position. Allow me to elaborate. Okay. There are two terms we're, dis we're discussing here. One is sex. That, revol that involves your sexual karyotype, your biology, right? The other is gender, 
Gender is just a description of outward appearances. So when right. somebody no, says, we reject that. We reject okay. that definition. Well, that, okay, that the, okay that, hold on, hold on, hold on, certain hold on. Let me just finish my thought, then you can reject it, right? Sex and gender are. Chris, let wait, me just finish Chris, my thought, and then you can reject it. Let me just finish my thought, and then you can reject it. When I use these words, these this is what I mean to describe. So I don't know why you would reject what I mean to describe, right? And if you want to use, if we want to use different because words, we can use different words. You are not allowed to change the language. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not changing the language. I'm simply conveying my meaning, right? That's all I'm doing. When I say sex, what I mean is the, the, the karyotype, the biology. And when I say gender, what I mean is the outward appearance as it relates to your biology, right? So, an ex so for example, a transsexual is someone who changes their biology. And a transgender, what I, when I say transgender, what I mean is someone who, you know, like, you know, has a, has a male biology, but then dresses as a, as a female. That's just okay. what I mean by those words, right? So I, I understand that's how you define the terms. And as a Christian, I disagree with all this anyway, but I, I at least understand, you know, in pop culture, you know, when you say transgender, um, that's what you mean when you say transsexual. And when someone says transsexual, they associate that with more uh, uh, the opposite. Like, like you're inverting it. And so for well, me, that would be that well, would be well, weird, right? Because well, in well, biology, can I finish my thought? I well, mean, no, but in biology, know. sex refers to so the biology. I, I can't. Right. right. Sex, but it sex has, refers right. to the sexual karyotype. See, so that would be none of, weird. Right? See, it's all weird. None of this matters. Everything is wrong. Like you're not going to get an argument from me. However, you're going to get an argument from everyone else who is in this debate. Um, so I'm, I mean, I, I don't even know why I'm, I'm caring at this point. Like, I, I agree with you. Like, this is all weird. It's all messed up. It's all inverted. Um, meaning, definitions of meanings people have tortured and turned on their head. So we agree. I'm just telling you, like, you know, because I have eyes and ears. When you talk about transgender issues, um, everyone is describing transgender how you describe transsexual and vice versa. I okay, agree. So, it's so, all messed up. Allow me, to, all allow me to understand, Nathan. You're saying that when people talk about gender, they're really talking about sex. And when they talk about sex, they're really talking about, like, outward appearance? Because that's weird, right? You know this, right? Like, turn on No, no, I channel. don't. No, I don't. No, as far as I know it, when people refer to sex, they're referring to, it's a shortening of horse sexual karyotype. Yeah, right? no, that's, that's what I what think they're, they're referring to. to. No, that's not what they're saying. This is the entire thing. Okay, so they, so then, like, like that would be, and what I'm telling you is that's weird to me. That's not my experience. So if you have a, hold on, hold on. If you have a different experience, I would love to, like, go you know, to, for example, the WHO, the World Health Organization, who shares my view, right? And, and so if we, you know, if we want to, if we want to look to an authority, the World Health Organization, I think, is a pretty good authority, and they share this view. And if uh, you want to point at other people. Other other people Terrible. who 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 don't share this view. I mean, I would love to discuss it with them. I'm just saying, for the sake of of discussion, I think we should just share our meanings and then go with those meanings, right? Right. Well, yeah, I think we I think we've done that meaning that literally no one else does in the entire world, and except the WHO, just, right? Well, except no, the World the Health WHO. Organization. No, no, okay. So uh, okay, uh, we don't need to argue oh, this. I can link you, but right? Go to WPath. WPath. Is Wait, hold the, on. Is the we don't need to argue this. I can just link you to the World Health Organization. Uh, uh, right? No, T. Okay. What you're, cool. you're not. Oh, okay. Coherent. Okay, cool. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to link you to the World Health Organization, discussing right, the difference the World between. World Health Organization also claims. Discussing. I'm. I'm not done yet. Hold on a second. I'm not done I, yet. I am about second. done with this. This is infuriating. Good. Thank you. I'll be really, really quick, Nate. I promise. I will link you to the World Health Organization discussing the difference between gender and sex, where it points at sex referring to a sexual karyotype and gender referring to the outward appearance. I'll just link you. It's cool. Okay, great. So I don't know why you feel the need to link us that when we have already said we agree with what you're saying about sex and gender. Oh, uh, I'll tell you, Nate, it's because Wait, it's, no, it's because Nate, of the claim that nobody else views it this way. That's what I'm okay. disputing, right? I'm saying in the transgender movement, <laughs> no one views it that way. When they yeah, I don't, say I don't buy that, though, right? Is a woman. If you, don't, you can not buy it all you want. I don't go buy it w for a Path. second. Right? Go to WPATH. That's all I'm saying. Is oh, I don't know what that is. Is a silly, silly organization that no one. I don't know why that. I don't know why that would be, right? Okay. okay no, what I'm trying. What what I'm... First of all, wait a minute. Do you know what WPATH is? 
Just I just said I didn't, if you were listening. Okay, okay. I, I didn't hear you say that, because everybody's talking at the same time. What yeah, I know, you keep talking over WPATH. me. It's really annoying, dude. WPATH... It's all annoying. Okay. WPATH is the main organization that prescribes uh, drugs for transgender people. Go and read what they say about sex and gender, because it's radically different from what you're talking about. Okay, I, I'm sure that might be true. Okay. But the claim was, let me just land, Nate, but the claim was that nobody shares my view, and I'm pointing at an organization which does. Okay. okay. Well, like, let we me don't try need one to more. be litigious. That's just silly. I'm saying that the main majority of people having this debate, the same thing Nate is saying, it would not share your view. And I, and I disagree I, based upon my experience. Right? Oh my gosh, right. this is so and frustrating. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. No, T, stay down there. I, I don't know why. Between Chris interrupting and, and you interrupting and me just wanting to beat my head against the, the table, I, I, I can't. We're done. This doesn't matter. Like, this doesn't matter. Like, me and Chris and you are more closely aligned on, on what we actually believe the facts are. We still disagree. But for some reason, I'm trying to be fair and give you the position of the majority of the people who are affected and in this debate, even though me and Chris, and I guess you, vehemently disagree with them, we're trying to, for the sake of accuracy, just tell you what these people actually believe. Yes, so they invert science, they turn logic and reason and definitions on their head. We agree. I don't need the WHO to tell me that. We agree that they are torturing the definitions. So whatever Chris and I disagree with you on, um, it's much less than the rest of the people. So we're, we're going out of our way to try to just explain this, and I don't know how you, you don't get it. Like, you must be living under a rock. Maybe Michael can chime in, but this is how they see it. And when they talk about gender, these are the people who – it's going to turn hand raising off again. I can't get a thought out when you beat me every two seconds. I put you down for a reason. So the last thing I'll say on this is – the people, when these people, like the pop culture people in this debate who are trans or are a trans ally or whatever, um, they're going to say when you talk about gender, there's like 63 or 62 or 63 genders, and that's what they get, they're going to mean by gender. So when you try telling them transsexual is one thing, they're probably going to beat you up and say, no, you're a bigot. It means something else. When you try to then say, no, transgender means something else, they're going to beat you up and call you a bigot and say, no, gender, there's 63 genders. That's what's happening. So I don't know why I'm trying to, like, carry water for this argument. Um, I completely disagree with it all. But, oh, my gosh. Michael, do you have anything to say? This may be the, one of the most frustrating days I've had in recent memory, and none of it has to do with the position I actually hold. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's interesting. That. I mean, words are polysemous, right? Uh, and that's why, um, that's why T was trying to say, this is how I'm using this word. Um, but I, I will say... And I think maybe this this might be the first time I'm ever saying this in this space. Nate, you put down the wrong person. Like, I, Chris has been obstructionistic, or pardon me, Chris was obstructionistic in every part of the conversation T was trying to have with him, and yet you moved T down to the audience. And I think that, that was really unfair. I mean, if I was being fair, I probably should have boomed both of them down. But Chris, let's, let's dissect you. Crawl into my couch for a little bit. So um, <laughs> how much would you say the... Um, you're, as you learn in presuppositional apologetics, um, that that makes you more um, trigger happy to like s jump in and steamroll over people, a uh, little, none, or a lot. Like none. <clears throat> it has nothing to do with that. What it has to do with is seeding the language. Is that what makes me crazy? Is when we just let people get away with making up their own definitions to words that have been the same for decades and decades. And then I get the cope and the nonsense that words change over time. And it's like, yeah, they change over hundreds of years, not over a dozen years. And, you know, you can't change the word gender, which just was simply a colloquial term for sex, um, into something that it is not. There was one person who did that from a women's studies program in the 1980s they changed the definition of gender and then got all the left wing to follow with it. And that's what makes me crazy is that we're just willing to give up the language. And when you give up the language, you give up the argument and then you lose. And then you get thrown okay. in concentration camps by Michael. Well, see, I would explain that in my way, uh, just how you did, but I would wait 
30 to 60 seconds for them to finish making their point and then call them out on it. Um, is that just a personality type or it did make it very difficult to discuss? It, it's, it's hard, right? Because there has been, and, and they like what you're, um, I'm, I hope I'm not projecting on you, Nate, but I, I don't think I am. Um, what you're not saying is what I am about to say. And that is there has been a marked change in how Chris communicates over the past several weeks. This is not hard to, to, to see. The other thing is that what Chris said about the meanings of words is, is just so, I'm sorry, laughably stupid um, and so easily demonstrably false. Um, and I can do it just in one very simple uh, demonstration. Chris, what does the word sick mean? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Let's go. What does the word sick mean? Words don't have just one single meaning. There are words that have multiple meanings. Precisely. Multiple precisely. Th th preci that, is, that is the point that isn't on the top of Chris's head I was trying to make. And, and that is – and it's unfortunate. But, you know, like you, you – it's like what does the word bad mean? Well, I don't know. Depends who you ask. If you ask, you know, Michael Jackson when he released uh, that song, he would say bad means something very different than the quote-unquote traditional meaning. So, like, so unfortunately – it is demonstrably the, the, just the fact of the matter that language evolves, just like species do. And, yeah, no. th th and this is, well, whatever. This is just the fact of the matter. Words are polysemous, okay? Not, quote unquote, giving up the definition doesn't help your argument. It shows you to be stubborn and pigheaded and unwilling to have a meaningful conversation. When you bicker over what a word means, it's foolish. Well, I also may have said that in my own nicer way, too. <laughs> um, Beg, what's up, Beg? So it was from a long time ago. I beg to differ. Maybe I didn't quite understand you. You said Christians believe in abiogenesis? Oh, wait, what? That, that was, this was really a really long time ago. Yeah, look, really long time ago, I thought you said Christians believe in abiogenesis, because I'm going to say I beg to differ with that. Oh, yeah, it, it's uh, – again, it's what you mean by that. So abiogenesis just means a single event that, or uh, the, the beginning event that started life. So, I mean, technically, Christians would because we believe God made Adam. That would be technically the abiogenesis event. Usually, uh, okay. like in pop culture, like in, in pop culture, just like the trans thing. In pop culture, when people say a, a, a abiogenesis event, they typically mean it in like an evolutionary biology way where like, you know, there was an event like either uh, matter came from a comet and interacted with stuff in our atmosphere and that created the spark of life or a lightning strike, you know, through electricity hit something and that caused a spark of life. Uh, typically, it's something not God related when someone says abiogenesis, but abiogenesis just means the first event that started life. So technically, since Christians believe, you know, God did it, well, then yes, we, we do believe in abiogenesis, but okay. what we believe that event was is vastly different than other people. All right, so I'm like that Supreme Court justice. I'm not a biologist, <laughs> not a biologist, but whenever I hear abiogenesis, I just take it to mean life from non-life. And so the reason I said I'd make a difference, and I don't believe in a bad genesis, because there's so many times the Bible talks calls God the living God. So life didn't come from non-life. Life came from life. Though God is not living the same way we are, but life does not come from non-life, which is what I think of when I hear a bad genesis. God is the living God. Just one verse I think of. It says, "It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God." God is alive, and life came from him, and not through some chemical process. It's, he spoke, and it happened. He commanded, and it stood fast. Yes, that and, is what we think. And since you, since I'm talking about the beginning of life, uh, someone, I don't know if he's still here. I wasn't looking at the screens. mentioned something about Genesis. I take Genesis to be God letting us know how we got here, um, which would put the age of the earth not at 
millions or billions of years, but a whole lot less. I don't have a problem believing that Genesis is the actual account of God letting us know how long it took for him to create and how he created. Not some temple, this, that, or the other, or not some polemic against anything else. He's letting us know what happened and how it happened. Yeah, and then, I mean, yeah, so tech, I mean, yeah, so abiogenesis means like that. I mean, you could, someone could word it in a way that I, I would probably agree on both sides. Um, but you made a good point. I mean, it, it real uh, maybe first life event was too generous. I mean, it's, it is kind of like what you said, like non living or living stuff came from non living, uh, non living like chemicals, like matter, um, which technically you could say, well, Adam was made from, you know, what was made from mud. Um, so that would be non living matter. But then if you say, well, the living God, you know, breathed the breath of life um, into him, but that would be spiritual. That wouldn't technically be like like matter as we know it. It would be, you know, God is spirit. So, I mean, if someone really wants to get. Yeah, I mean, depending how you nuance that, I could go either way. But I mean, I think it would be easier just to be like, look, Christians believe God made Adam. That's it. So however you uh, want to explain that, that's what Christians believe. OK, and so the last two things. Uh, the... I guess it was T that was talking and he's not up here, but would ask him two questions when he's, I guess he's believing in a bad Genesis. What does he call life? What, how would he define life? That's number one. And number two is if I would say no, a bad Genesis, the way he means it cannot happen. And he asked something about what is the limit and I don't know, he was asking Chris, and I don't know if Chris knew the answer. I don't know the answer. But I would ask this, what is the limit to the speed of light? But just because I don't know what limits the speed of light to what it is, that doesn't mean the speed of light doesn't have a limit. I mean, you know, it has a limit, right? What limits yeah. the speed of light to what it is? I don't know. What limits uh, abiogenesis to the way he describes it to not be able to take place? I don't know, but it can't take place. That was all I had. Okay, well, I appreciate that. I mean, if he wants to answer in chat, that's that's fine. He can answer, but uh, I, I'm just, I and mean, we we've tried twice, twice, and uh, between Chris and T, a, a conversation can't be had. So I should, probably should have dropped them both. But I mean, I'm I'm trying to give Chris the benefit of the doubt because I don't I don't know why because I like pain. But um, um, <laughs> let's is, see. It, uh, it is um, interesting. Greg, Greg made a, an interesting statement there about you know like a definition of life. Um, I've I don't know that I've ever heard a coherent definition of life, but there are attributes, or I shouldn't say attributes, traits, characteristics um, of of life that are pretty, um, not even pretty. They are they are not um, uh, in in dispute at all, right? I, I had to pull up the list because I couldn't remember all of them. I can I can only remember one of them, um, and that's a reproduction. Uh, heredity, cellular organization, growth and development, uh, response to stimuli, adaptation through evolution, homeostasis, and metabolism. So I'm curious as to what um, I's definition of life is. Um, well, real quick, I, I just want to say that I, I guarantee if we found bacteria on Mars, um, the world would be blowing up with we found life, we found life. Guarantee. Um, but whenever people say you can be nine months pregnant and uh, that's not life. Um, that seems like something that kind of breaks the brain a little bit. Um, but I think we can all agree if someone found uh, bacteria on Mars life, everyone. Who, who are you, who are these people you're speaking to that, that think uh, a nine month old fetus isn't alive? I feel like I'm living in a, uh, I don't know. Google California. When is life? Um, <laughs> Uh, I mean, well, it's funny because things... I think it's it's actually in Genesis. I think it's Genesis six. It says life begins at the first breath. Well, you just answered your own question. I mean, I, I would take issue with that, but I mean, it seems like you you got an answer. So it's the first breath. So you'd say, so, who are these people saying? So nine... by that reckoning, then a, so so by that reckoning, then you would think a fetus is not alive because a fetus doesn't doesn't uh, uh, respirate. No, I think there's more context that you're missing to that because um, you know Jeremiah. Before I before you're in the womb, I knew you. You were formed. Um, so, I mean, I, I would dispute that, but it seems like you answered your own question. Like, you would think even the Bible says before you're born and take your first breath, you don't have life. So pretty much everyone from religious to non-religious. Um, so oh, I, mean, that I, would be I don't believe answer. that's the case. I don't believe that's the case. 
I, I mean, you, you, could, you could make the argument that the egg and the sperm separately are both living. Like, I don't believe that they're, I don't believe they're, they're conscious, but I believe they're, those are both like living cells, right? Like they're, they're not even singular, they're multicellular, right? And, and that, <clears throat> and I don't think there's any intelligent argument against the, the fact that when, when a pregnancy is, is terminated, I uh, 25, I think the, the, um, oh, what was it? National, the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, uh, put a report out many years ago. Uh, they were, when kind of this abortion debate was, uh, what's well, been going on for a long time, saying that approximately 25% of all recognized pregnancies end in spontaneous abortion by the, by the, uh, by the, the woman's body because of either some type of genetic abnormality or whatever it happens to be, right? I, I personally believe that like that, that's, a, that's a termination of a quote-unquote life. Like, I, I don't have any problem with that. Well, I think there's also a lot of environmental factors, but you, I mean, you know, what you said about the egg and the sperm, that wouldn't even enter the abor abortion debate because no one aborts a sperm, no one aborts an egg. I mean, it's when the, you know, it's when there's some sort of conception, that's when that starts. Um, so, so before that, even though you consider that life, um, and, and also life like what? Life like something is living or life like human life, like it's, it's going to be human. Or even if it's a little baby zygote, if you leave that thing alone, it's going to turn into a human um, unless, you know, something like you mentioned happens. Or, and also, like, if you look at fertility rates and things like that, goodness, I just can't get off this stuff today. Um, but if you look at some of the studies coming out from, I, I don't even know where, you'll just have to Google it or take my word, but it seems like there's more evidence coming out saying like, since people have got, as it Pfizer or Moderna, one of the vaccines for COVID, um, that it's decreasing sperm count and causing like miscarriages, um, at, at a very high, I forget the number, but it's a, a lot higher level. So, I mean, if any of that is true, it, it just seems that like, um, over time, over history, that these numbers are going down more miscarriages more more things like that like you're talking about and it doesn't mean necessarily that oh see even god wants abortions because miscarriages happen um there could be a whole host of other reasons environmental chemicals um you know bad water i don't know or vaccines or shots or modern medicine with unforeseen circumstances so even if we're, we're trying to say well see abortions happen naturally which i mean by definition it's not really an abortion but ending a life a termination i, I get it um, we can't say that's part of the natural process. Um, for all we know, you know, in caveman days, um, well, I, I don't know, because contamination of food or whatever. But we, we can just say without some sort of external environmental or chemical factor that should not be there in an ideal world, um, that caused that doesn't mean like, you know, it was built in like, you know, God wants half the present pregnancies to fail. That, that would be my only point. Sorry, it took so long. No, it's interesting. But do you think so? You said something interesting a second ago about you know the numbers of abortions increasing. Do you mean numbers as in like because I mean it wouldn't be controversial to say there are quote unquote more um, problems now because there's also the population is is greater now, right? So you know it's like more, more like same as it's like more people die every day of natural causes today than they did 200 years ago. Well, there's also three billion more people than there were, right? So this, but I'm wondering if it's if it's strict numbers or whether it's by percentage of population. I don't know anyone. Um, I, I I don't know anyone who would have the statistics. Maybe someone somewhere does, but I don't know. Um, but what we can say is we didn't have, uh, you know, any of the modern vaccine shots, the food chemicals, the plastics. Uh, we didn't have any of that stuff. So even if we're saying, well, it's a higher percentage because there's more people or not, um, one thing we do know is the pollutants that are like in our systems, in our bodies, like messing with our DNA. Like, you know, you'll have like little fibrous things like attaching and like re like like remanaging people's DNA with all, all this like different nasty stuff uh, that we've, we've come up with, like synthetic plastics and, and BPA and all this other stuff that people did not have to worry about, like fertilizer and um, – you know, all this runoff that gets into our drinking water. So even, even if it's by number or percentage because of more people now than ever, um, one thing we can say is the amount of pollutants introduced in our environment is astronomically higher. Um, so that's not good, no matter how you look at it. Yeah, I don't think that that's a controversial statement. Yeah, pollutants are bad. Yeah, and we definitely have many more of those than we ever have, so... I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say that's the chief issue. <laughs> uh, Chris, or what do you think, Chris?
Chris. All right, he hates us. Uh, beg. I was wondering if Beg had that definition of life. Uh, Beg? Yeah. Uh, you're kind of chopping out. I think something is going on with your microphone. Man, this has been a this has been a pretty volatile day, huh? Okay, so that that list that Michael read off that sounds uh, reasonable, except for that adaptation by evolution or whatever that is. Uh, uh, when you said previously something about evolution, yeah, nothing evolves. Uh, things do adapt. Um, why would you call adaptation evolution? Um, well, those are depending on how you're using them, those could be synonymous terms. Um, un unfortunately, uh, evolution, is, the, the neo-Darwinian synthesis, is the most highly supported theory in all of science. Um, and no, like no, it's, no, no. Oh, okay, which one's, hot, which one's more supported than evolution? Do you know of one? Evolution, nothing evolves. Can you point to something that has evolved? Oh, sure. Yeah. So it, it's actually been. So do you understand what evolution is? Maybe that's a better question to start with. Uh, Fairy tale for adults. <laughs> oh, OK. So so what evolution is uh, the, the easiest definition to use is <clears throat> changes in allele frequencies and populations over time. Now, based on what you just said, I know you don't know what that means. Um, well, so, can, well, so since I don't know what it means, just why would you call change in allele frequency evolution? Why not just call it change in allele frequency? Because it takes time. Okay, but it's still a change in allele frequency. Why would you call it evolution as opposed to calling it a change in allele frequency? If it, if, well, to use one of Chris's terms, if it helps you cope better, to just call it changes in allele frequency over time other than evolution, that's fine. But that's so, what it is. You, that's, isn't that what you said it is? A change in allele sure. frequency over time? So why not just leave it at that instead of calling it evolution? For the same reason we don't call an engine, four tires, a roof, and a bunch of electronics, for the same reason we call all those things a car, we call changes in allele frequencies and populations over time evolution. No, no, no. I don't think I can have this conversation with you. It's okay. Did you have a definition for life? You it's, asked me. I'm. I'll you asked me. I'm wondering you, if you have a definition. I didn't ask you for a definition of life. You misunderstood if you thought I did. Well, you asked T. T wasn't on stage, so I offered one. Okay. I'm, and I, I'm curious I, if you have one. I already well, said, uh, uh, maybe I, my mic wasn't open, but I said that list that you read off, I could go with all of that, except for the lie about adaptation through evolution or if evolution through adaptation, whichever one of those. That sounds finally fine and reasonable to me, except for the evolution, because nothing evolves. Okay, and I understand that that's your theological perspective. Unfortunately, it's not true. It's not theological. It's the fact of life. Can you tell me Why something that has evolved? Well, hang on real fast. Um, programming note. <laughs> I've got maybe 15 minutes or 20 left, so I will send an invite to ST and everyone. And if uh, Chris and T and everyone just want to interrupt and yell and scream, that's fine. Um, you know, as much as we usually have civil discussions. <clears throat> Why, why fight it, right? So for the remainder of the day, all, all the topics we wanted to discuss, um, I wanted to discuss, are done and over. So I think there's enough good content. Um, let's just see. And, and maybe it's like the Vincent Price thing, right? Like whatever will make a sane person go crazy is the same thing you'll use to cure a crazy person uh, and make them go sane. So maybe by <clears throat> encouraging chaos, we will get order out of it. Um, just like just like you think Michael happened in the universe, right? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so here comes an invite, um, and anyone new that's just going to show up, 
Uh, God have mercy on you. All right. So everyone, come on, and it's a madhouse. Go for it. No order. Everyone speak. You figure it out. Prison rules. Prison rules. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And now no one's speaking. Well, no. There's no – I mean, I'm just waiting for somebody else to chime in. There, There is no – T is there, still waiting we, for an invite. I just, yeah. I just sent invites to everyone. There is no sense in trying to have a discussion about evolution with someone who doesn't understand what it is. So – I'm just I'm just not going to bother with that conversation. There's there's no sense. No, what exactly. I don't understand, what I don't understand is why would you call change in allele frequency over time evolution as opposed to calling it change in allele frequency over time? I no, actually, I would say yeah, I do know it. why, and the reason why is because you can say this happens and this is evolution. So now when you call change in allele frequency over time, which does happen, you can say, see, there is evolution. But it's not oh, evolution. Sorry. It's change in a f allele frequency over time. But you call yeah, like, it evolution ah, just can so you can say we you have evolution. Everyone, can you send, can you send not, everyone? G, I, G, I promise I've got this, G. Michael, I made you a mod because it's not letting me invite people. Can you please oh, send an invite to everyone to on that, stage? I, I know you were. I got I got you. <laughs> so, Michael, uh, would you mind please sending T and everyone else an invite and, if you'd like? Um, I can't. I, I can't see for some reason. Yeah, I guess there's a glitch in the matrix because I can't see people's hands raised. So, um, oh, no, just I, send an invite anyways. Oh, OK. Understood. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it wasn't letting me. It actually wasn't letting me do it either. But there's there's T, and it still shows T. Oh, wow, it's weird. No, he's All right. Now. So yeah, I beg to differ. Today. I beg to differ. Um, I think you have a misunderstanding regarding the definition of evolution. Evolution is described as the description of a process by which uh, changes accumulate over successive generations. So, because changes accumulate over successive generations, evolution occurs. Like, you think changes can accumulate to change uh, ape into a man, Mr. T? No, I don't think that's how the process is being described, right? I no, think I'm not. Process... I'm, I'm asking well, on, you, do you me, think me, changes me over time can allow me change respond, an ape into please. a man? Allow me to respond, please. No, I don't think that's the, the description of the process, right? That would be a, a misrepresentation of what's being described. Apes do not change into men. Men are apes. That's the process. says who says who biology says every biology and, and says biology. Okay, and why do they say that? Okay, so we say that because we are we have a common ancestor with apes. Are you a biologist? Yes, I am. Okay, you, what common ancestor do we have with apes? Hominidae. How how do you say that? H O M I N I. -E. No, no, no. Why, I should say. Homiday. Why do you say that when God created man in His image, separate from apes, we don't have a common ancestor? It is you're assuming. I, I wouldn't assume. Did you, such did a you thing. trace the ge Did you trace the genealogy? Well, hold on a second. I wouldn't assume such a thing. That, that's incorrect. That would be a mischaracterization of the work that we do. We don't assume these things. So I'd like to just so back. What that is your proof then that ape? Man came from a common ancestor. What is the proof? Genetics. What genetics? So, for example, this... the chromosomal fusion between the twenty uh, the twenty third chromosome. Okay, so that doesn't say that man came from apes. Well, actually, it That's... does. No, it and does you, not. Well, it does, and if you would like me to explain how it says that, I would. We could have that discussion, right? You can explain why you believe it. No, no, does. no, 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 no. I'm not talking about my beliefs. So let's clear that up, right? I'm talking you, you, are, you, you didn't ask me. so you don't so believe hold it. Second, hold on a second. I, so you're saying you don't believe it? Hold on a second, please. Hold on. I mean, you yes or no, you me, believe it or you don't. Hold on a second, please let me speak. You asked me for proof. You didn't ask me what I believe. If you want to discuss what I believe, how is that proof? Have well, you I, seen I'm not done yet. have you seen it happen? I beg to differ. I wasn't done with my sentence. Can you just let Will me finish, you, please? I'm just trying please, to get you to not beg the question. Can you just please let me finish? But you're begging the question. Can you just please let me finish, though? Shut up. Just, just, just allow me to finish my thought, and then you can go, I promise. You didn't ask me for 
um, my belief. You ask me for proof. Now, if you would wish, if you wish to engage with the proof being offered, I would love to have that discussion with you. It's not proof unless you've seen okay, it. But hold on a second. Hold on. If you wish to engage with the proof, then I'd love to have that discussion. If you're just going to sit here and deny that it's proof, I don't see where this discussion this is, can go. So you're, you're not understand? willing to discuss? It seems like you no, 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 I, keep I said repeating I was, yourself. Right? I said I was. Okay. I was like, can you do that without continually repeating yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. go. Can you do it without interrupting me? Not sure, but go. Okay. Okay. So it's proof because it demonstrates common ancestry of the species. What's more, can can I 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 I wasn't can I interrupt you right now? When I'm finished, I promise I'll be quick. I won't I won't even repeat myself, right? Okay. What's more is there's other lines of evidence which confirm this evidence. And I can discuss those with you too, right? So so what are you are you done now? When I mute, that's kind of your clue your clue, right? I'm not. I'm. I'm driving. I'm. I'm not looking at the screen. I don't know when you're mute and, and when you don't. I just heard well, silence. I, mean, I think a, a, a two, two or three second pause is a pretty good indicator, R- rather than just speaking up like like when I'm in the middle of a sentence and haven't even like finished yet. You know. Okay. So I, let me say this: If you had, let's say, a whale and a chain of custody or something, and you saw a turtle evolved from that whale and you did you studied their genetics and they had a fusion like the one you're claiming shows shows that we evolved from apes and that fusion was you're literally speaking nonsense and both of them then you could say so you see when this thing evolved from that thing there's a fusion that shows you that it evolved you find a fusion that doesn't mean that there's well, I, proof I, I of evolution, say that. unless you're I assuming. Didn't say that. Unless you're assuming. No, that. I didn't say that. Okay, I didn't say that. You said the fusion is proof. Yeah, I, I, you, know, you didn't understand me though, right? I didn't say just you, because we find a fusion, therefore it's proof. I didn't say that. So allow me to actually address what you're okay. saying. Your hypothetical. But scenario, before you address what I'm saying, before you address what I'm saying, hold on a second, you did, please. You did hold offer the second, fusion as proof. Hold on yes a second, or no? Please. Hold on a second. Please. Hold on a second, please. My turn to speak now. Okay. Uh, what Simple your, your yes hypothetical, or no. Uh, your hypothetical I'm scenario. Holding, I'm holding. Your hypothetical scenario on, is I'm literally impossible. Okay. Do you understand why your hypothetical scenario? Yeah, because is nothing evolves. Impossible? Because no, that's, no, because that's not because evolution. Because nothing evolves. No, because that's not evolution. That's why it's impossible, right? Okay. Okay. So, so let's, so let's talk about. So hold on a second. Allow me to demonstrates speak. Demonstrates evolution. Allow me to speak, please. Let's talk about the actual process that we do observe, not some like impossible thing. Can we do that? Would that be okay? Not if you keep stopping to ask questions. No, just continue. No, 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 no. no. I, I'm asking, would it be okay if we stuck to the actual topic of evolution? Would that be okay? When did we get off of that topic? When you started talking about things that are impossible. This. <laughs> When you talk same about thing a... you're doing. It's talking about because no, no, you see no, no, a fusion no, no, that no, 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 no. shows you, evolution. You didn't understand me. Hold on. When you talk about a whale turning into a turtle, that's impossible. So let's leave that fairy tale behind and discuss okay, the actual time, process. Okay, time out, time out, time out. You didn't understand what I said. I didn't say a whale turning into you actually a turtle. Did. You actually did. Okay, well, maybe I misspoke. Okay. Let me try this again. Okay, let's that's say you have a whale. I think he got interrupted halfway through what he was trying to say. Yeah, because it's literally nonsense. All right. It's impossible. Let's say you have a whale. Yes. <laughs> and someone's going to say, okay, this turtle evolved from whale. That's impossible. Some, from some... That's impossible, right? Oh, okay. Okay, so, so let's, 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 let's build. Let's I thought spell. you were Hold against on, interruptions. Wait, you're no, no, I am not done. Why that's I am not done. I am not done. Why that's impossible. I am not done. See, it's impossible, you, you, though. You, I you, am you, not done. You're off topic. Why don't you topic. see where he's going? You're off topic. Yeah, why don't you do that? Why you're you off let... topic, though. He Here. said someone okay. can we is stick going to the speak? topic, please. He said someone. Okay. Can we can we please Just... stick to the topic? Because that's not evolution. 
right? But the guy's not saying it is. He said, he said someone is going to say something that you think is incorrect, and then you interrupt him. Maybe the thing no, 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 that's right not what happened, that, that's, that's what he what just happened. said. He said someone is going to say this, that the whale came from a turtle or whatever, and you interrupt no, him. No, no one's going you, to say that, Nate. No one's going to say that. Wait, but you don't, maybe the thing, maybe the second part of what he's going to say, you'll be like, oh, I thought you were going to say something, but oh no, now I see what you're trying to yeah, ask. Yeah, but nobody's going to say that, right? I'll, I'll say that. For the record, I'll say that. There, okay, well, I just think you're wrong. That. I just think you're wrong. I don't real, I'm taking a false stance. I just okay. want to hear what the guys okay. say. So that, like, I'm, I'm, and I'm pointing out that that's impossible. Okay, right? great. So, so okay. let's see what So let's discuss say. what's actually possible, not what's <laughs> impossible, okay? So evolution is impossible. If you just no, no, go, no, 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 if no, you no. want to leave off, no, no, with, hold on, hold on a second. Okay. So it's not impossible. You want to leave off with what's impossible. It's not Let's impossible. Leave off with evolution that you think <laughs> happened. Hold on a second. It's not impossible. So why are you asking me to, to hold on when you It's not impossible for changes to accumulate over successive generations. That's not impossible. So let's dispel that myth right up front. Okay, changes do accumulate over successive generations. That's not impossible. Who says changes don't accumulate? Who who says who says that? Who said that? You just Anyone said that. today on stage? I did you not just say that. that. Yes, you I just said evolution that. is impossible. We okay, heard you say it. I, we heard you say <laughs> evolution is impossible. Yeah. Right? Listen, the changes that occur over generations is not evolution. Actually, I, I that, that's where you're wrong. As a biologist, I'm trying to correct you. When a biologist refers to evolution, they're referring to the process by which changes accumulate over successive generations. That's, That's what a biologist means by evolution. Okay. So it's not changes in allele frequency? That's one of the things that occurs, right? Is that in biology, the change that accumulates over successive generations is changes in the allele length. That is the change that is accumulating over successive generations. Okay, so back to the whale. You have okay. a person that says the whale and the turtle have a common ancestor. They do. And, we know, and the way that we know that they do is because of this fusion in this no, certain chromosome. That's incorrect. No, that's incorrect. No, that only applies for apes. So I was finished or I was no, not no, finished? No, that's incorrect, right? I was that finished or I was not finished. Humans. And just in case there's any doubt as to whether or not I was finished, I was not. So okay, may I continue? Apes, that doesn't apply may to apes. May I continue? Turtles. No, because yes that doesn't no, apply to whales and turtles. So I can't continue? No, because that doesn't apply to whales and turtles. <sighs> it only applies to apes and humans, right? And on that note, I am out of time. We are cool. all worse having listened to this conversation. <laughs> I hope not. I hope that you actually like picked up on something there. Like you've got a, mi a number no of misunderstandings regarding evolution, right? Uh, what, what do you mean me? Was... I, I, I no, 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 no. I'm, talk I'm talking to, to I beg to differ, right? Okay. Was, everyone, was was that we'll see you so, all later. Nate? Was that God sufficient chaos, or do we need more? Uh, uh, bye. All right, all right, Mr. <laughs> T. Have a nice day. Uh, anytime involves. you wish to discuss the topic, I'd love to discuss it with you. Uh, you no, nah, I probably. Well, if you don't want to learn, that's fine.